might be fun. Because yeah. I print these out on cards, so they're all exactly the same. You know, it's not torn piece of paper and folded. Right. It's, yeah. You know, it's, it's a card. It's an official entry. Folded form. one time, so every when you reach in there, there's all of them are exactly alike. Mm -hmm. And when I print them out, I don't. Okay, I guess I could do. I could figure that out. I look. If it's not too much work, I'll, <laughs> I'll consider that. Okay. Tiger's gonna have trouble birdieing this one. Uh -oh, he's, he's in between trees. Now this trick shot. Trick shot. Oh yeah, no, this is nothing. This is nothing. Oh, to look it. how you curve that thing around. Well, I'll be done. It's gonna really? roll up on the ground. Oh, uh -oh. Stop. stop! 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 Nah. Well, you know, can't birdie hey, long. You can still putt though. But <laughs> <laughs> the fifty-nine watch is yeah. much alive, isn't it? Yeah. Tight now it says Tiger fifty-nine. The watch. Tiger fifty-nine watch. <laughs> Can you tell them how to get in touch with you? 848-5507. Give me a call, text me, whatever. Now, where, you're playing golf tomorrow. I am, I man. Christian Brothers Alumni Golf Tournament, man. There's 280 of us. Where is that going? Galloway. Holy smokes. Well, morning, afternoon, are full, and we're going to have a blast. Man, that will be a good one. Yes, sir. Kenny Myers, you know we love you. We appreciate everything you do for us. we got to get out of here. we got to make room for fish and stats. They're coming up next. But if you want to get in touch with Kenny Myers, 848-5507. Call him tomorrow during the golf tournament. Just to aggravate him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll answer the phone, and I, I will sell a car off, of, off the know. side of the green. I, I know you will. I have no <laughs> doubt. We want to thank you for listening. We sure want to thank you for calling in, being part of it. As we get a little closer to football, we'll talk more and more about those $100 checks you can send to Special Olympics and get in this thing. We'd love for Special Olympics to have your $100, and we'd love for you to have a chance to win the prize package as well. Thanks to Bash for a great production job. We get that every day. You just get used to it, but we sure don't want to take him for granted. That's for sure. We appreciate the fact you choose to make us part of your afternoon each weekday. You have a great, safe afternoon and weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday. Fish and Stats are up next. You've been listening to Gateway Tire and Service Center's Southern Sports Report with John Rainey, the Rain Man. Southern Sports Report is produced in the studios of Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall and is a copyrighted presentation. Any rebroadcast or other use of the contents of Gateway's Southern Sports Report without the express written consent of Memphis Sports Radio is prohibited. Join us each weekday afternoon for Gateway Southern Sports Report. All right, guys, time to make some decisions that will affect your entire football season. Are you going to fall for the game of the week or the year or the decade from somebody who lies about their 80% win rate, starts off talking a lot of smack, but disappears about two-thirds of the way through the season? Someone who promises a whole lot of free picks and then starts their high-pressure sales routine. Somebody who doesn't even use their real name. How about going with somebody you know and trust, a rain man in all-star sports? Our first 15 special is underway. The first 15 customers who sign up get season football, college and pro, and season basketball, college and pro, for $1,500. Total cost. And you get every play we make, no exceptions, 10-star plays included. This year, late money updates will be texted to our season customers. Call us at 461-4600 or check out the specials at therainman.com. Our 36th football season is coming up. We want you to be part of it. If you're into woodworking, it just keeps getting better at the Wood Workshop, the Mid-South's premier supplier of professional tools and supplies, fine hardwoods, and expert advice and instruction on all things wood. The Wood Workshop is located at 8500 Wolf Lake Drive, number 101 in Bartlett, directly behind Sam's, just down from the Wolf Chase Galleria. And it's one of my favorite places in the whole world. They just never stop getting better. They're now a dealer for Saw Stop the most incredible table saw I've ever seen. It's the safest table saw ever made with a safety system that stops and retracts the blade within five milliseconds of accidental contact, like your finger, drastically reducing the severity of any injury. The Woodwork Shop is a Rockler store. They get new products weekly. They now carry WorkSharp, a great tool sharpening system, Easy Wood Tools, Freud, the best woodworking tools in the world, Woodpecker Tools, some of the best I've ever seen. You know what? You just need to go see for yourself. Call the Woodwork Shop at 755-7355. That's 755-7355, the Woodwork Shop.
The name has changed from Dobbs Honda Mendenhall to Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall, and everything else stays the same. Same great people on the floor, same great service department, same great deals on new Hondas and certified used cars, and Kenny Meyer still running the show. Dobbs has actually been an Auto Nation store for over 15 years, but now for marketing and advertising purposes nationwide, the sign on the building says Auto Nation. So let's kick things off with the Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall Summer Sell Down event. Vacation time means vans and SUVs, and Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall has Odysseys and pilots that comfortably seat eight and still have room for your gear. The new 2013 Accord is roomier, quieter, and more fuel efficient than any Accord ever made. When you mix the number one retailer of cars and trucks in America with the number one down home sales and service store in Memphis, you get Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall. Call Kenny Myers at 848-5507 or drop by and visit at 2875 Mendenhall Road South. Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall. The home of the old Memphis Redbirds and the AutoZone Liberty Bull. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis, a Flynn Broadcasting Company. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It's 3 o'clock. I'm David Cobb. Tiger Woods is on fire today at the Bridgestone Invitational. He's minus 8 through 13 and 6 strokes ahead of second place. Woods opened his round today with birdie, eagle, birdie, and route to a 30 on the front nine. He has, of course, already won four events this season. No news on Mo Williams since this morning when Ron Tillery of the Commercial Appeal and Sports 56 reported that the veteran free agent guard is close to choosing his next NBA team. The Grizzlies are in the running for his services along with Utah, Miami, San Antonio, and New York. Quick note out of the NFL, the Philadelphia Eagles have excused wide receiver Riley Cooper from all team activities for the time being so that he can participate in counseling after a video of him using a racial slur went viral online. And one non-sports item, a British newspaper called the Daily Star is reporting that Kanye West is interested in purchasing Graceland for his girlfriend, Kim Kardashian. Hmm. Well, this sports report is brought to you by Cowboy Corner. Visit Cowboy Corner Boots and Jeans, where you'll find over 5,000 pair of Western work boots and boots for the whole family. You will also find lots of jeans and Western apparel, lots of service, and a lot of savings. Cowboy Corner on Goodman Road in South Haven. <laughs> it's time for Fish and Stats on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Fish and Stats is presented by Auto Nation GMC. Now, here are your hosts, Rob Fisher and Brad Norsworthy. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to 59 watch here on sport 56 87 7 fm fishing stats with you until six o'clock we got a 59 watch going on stats we do and as, as someone just tweeted out and i'm upset that they tweeted out tweeted it out before our good friend eli savoy you know he's with the uh, the midday show each day here 11 and oh, 1 well, yes. uh <laughs> he always has the term you know a, a grisaster you know for uh -huh. a disaster when the game's turned bad and, and he'll throw out the warnings and the watches and everything and Eli got beat to it on the Twitter. I just saw that it's not a 59 watch anymore. It's turned into a 59 warning because 59 is certainly in play for Tiger Woods, who has owned Firestone. Uh-oh. He's owned Firestone in his career. He just got bit by a bug, it looks like. Be careful in the live play-by-play. -play. <laughs> that was a few seconds ago. He got bit by a bug, it looks like. Legal, line four. Yeah. Uh, no, but Tiger owns this place. Seven wins at Firestone. He owns, he's already won this week. And he today is on 59 watch. He's now 13 under par. Today, he is nine under par with four holes to go. And it's a par 70. And he's currently on 15, which is a par three. And he knocked it tight. About an eight-foot uphill, a little bit right to left. Tiger is 27 for 27 in putts within 10 feet. That is ridiculous. And I did my not top story of the day at about 11 o'clock this morning. Oh, yeah? And it's very apropos. All right. Well, good. Looking forward to that. He has 12 putts Craig, today. Craig Wood, seven under. I, I'm not familiar with him. Tiger Woods, 13 under. <laughs> Big difference. But yeah, that S. Yeah, a third. I think that S stands for Superman. Right. I believe it's well. It's actually now he has 12 putts on the day. I believe. 
through that, 13 holes. He's going for right? a record there, but the big one's 59 or sh- or no, I'm sorry, 11 one Shutter putts. 11 one putts through 13. He now has 12 one putts through 14. Looking to make it now 13 through 15. If he can get birdie here on 15, he will basically need to birdie one of the final three holes to get 59, which means, and there's a par five is the next hole. And he's owned so 18. So could even, he could blister 59. He could. He he could join many people, like the, I think 13 people have walked on the moon. He could join them in walking on the moon at 59. But how about we head straight to Saturn with the 58? Join Roe Ishikawa who had a 58 in the Japan Golf Tour back in 2010. A 12 under par 58 in the Crowns Tournament. PGA Tour, of course, Al Guyberger, 59, back in 1977 in the Danny Thomas Memphis Classic. Uh, Chip Beck, a 59 in 1991, the Las Vegas Invitational. David Duval in 1999, had a 59 at the Bob Hope Chrysler Classic. And Paul Goidos and Stu Appleby both went 59 in 2010. Goidos at the John Deere, Appleby at the Greenbrier Classic. And uh, those are the PGA Tour 59s. A- Appleby's done it once or twice? Uh, Appleby has done it uh, one time. And then other players, including David Gossett, had a 59 in the Q School Tournament. Uh, and qualifying. And you, you found a very interesting note before we came on. Of course, Al Guy Berger, and we're all, you know, proud of and know, and know the historic aspect of him doing it here in Memphis at famed Colonial South in 1977. And he was a major winner. I think a lot of times people think, you know, Al Guy Berger was kind of just a just a tour guy that had that one good day. He, he was a very, very, very solid player and uh, won a PGA championship, won a major and many times a member of the Ryder Cup team. At least, well, I say many times, at least twice. A good, good, good player. And you found in 1966 when he won his PGA. Right here at Firestone. At Firestone. How about that? How about that synchronicity? It all just kind of comes together. The worlds are colliding, and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, so Al we'll, Guyberger now 75. 75 years old. Yeah. And and has had some struggles, and I – we, we we may we may catch up with Phil Cannon at some point if we have history and talk about it you know in relation to our our tournament. Absolutely, Al Guyberger, nickname of course, Mister Fifty Nine. Also another nickname for him, Skippy. Never knew it. I didn't know that. Not know that either. Uh, but Wikipedia says it. So then are you? <laughs> they know everything. Absolutely. Uh, and our you remember our good friend Chris Raby who uh, used to be here at the station. Now at uh, the Cam Watson in St. Louis. These people like I don't know them. <laughs> I do remember. Is that a fair memory? I know it's a little touch and go today, but I, yes, I know. He, uh, in fact, I retweeted Brother Ray at some point today. He just tweeted out. He, he, Hi, Rob. I'm Brett Northworthy. Right. <laughs> you remember David Basham, right? He's, yeah. he's over there. Hey, David. David uh, Bob, we're a good friend leaving today. Last day for intern for what? BC. Well, Headed back to that, 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 that was quick. UTK. Well, he's a student. He's got to get back. It's well, all. Let's just hire him and forget that school well, stuff. Well, can we do that? Yeah, yeah, I think he's bound for the New York Times someday. Well, then, okay. Go to go back to school. Then. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he'll turn pro if we'll give him cash. He just said he'd forego the amateurism. <laughs> um, nice to meet everyone. Good to have you, Chris. Chris, <laughs> Chris Raby just tweeted out. He said he, you know, the the fifty nine or, or sub sixty at least in golf really. It seems almost like it's equivalent to a no-hitter uh, in baseball. It's one of those type mm-hmm. of things. And he was wondering and asked the question, uh, if a player, a golfer, is basically on the verge or has a 59 watch and he's going, do you just leave him alone? Do you not Do you not go near him? Do you not talk to him? And you don't want to jinx the whole deal? If you're the caddy, do you, do you even, I guess, only speak when spoken to at that point, Where's right? Stevie Williams is what we need to know. He tries to go out there. He's going to come running out there on 18. Jimmy Six on it and hex him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, uh, yeah, Tiger now has a, a nine-footer for birdie on 15. Right to the left. Breaker. He does this. He'll be one more birdie away with three holes to go to get 59. And, again, there's a par five on the next hole. Uh, and he owns 18 uh, as well. So still chances there for Tiger. Tiger Can he do perfect. this without the ubiquitous black? Uh, pants, red shirt. I think, yeah, it sure looks like it. He is now 27 of 27 on putts within 10 feet this week. 
And um, this is uh, this would be 28 of 28. Qu quickly at 67129. Pulling for or again, Tiger? For. Oh, absolutely. And I think the majority would say for or against. For or against. And if it's against, why? 67129. Uh, you can text in 67129 uh, is the number to text, and you can text throughout the program today. we got a lot of things we're going to be talking about today. And uh, hopefully, I, I hope, because I do want to see it, I'm rooting for it, hopefully we'll be talking about uh, Tiger Woods making history today uh, on the golf course. He uh, he missed that putt. First putt that, that he's grown. Yeah, I heard it. Uh, first putt that he's missed inside 10 feet all week. So back-to-back -back pars for Tiger Woods. So still needs two birdies with three holes to go to get to 59. He's got a par five on 16, and then par fours at 17 and 18. There's more twos and threes on that scorecard. I did it in my grade point. It's pretty remarkable what uh, wow. that scorecard looks like today. But I a fire a 59. It's pretty much you know Annika Soren's damn shot. A 59. Uh -huh. I don't know who the playing partners for Al Guyberger, Mr. 59, who, who they were at, it's at Colonial South that day. Poor Matsuyama. He, he's had the front row seat for history, hasn't he? Yeah, pretty pretty good. Uh, by the way, Guyberger uh, became the first player, of course, to post the 59 BGA Tour history. Started on the 10th tee at Colonial. Shot a bogey-free round of six pars, 11 right. birdies, and an eagle. Uh, won the tournament and uh, shot even par 72 in the first and third rounds. Uh, was two strokes down to Gary Player on Sunday, but uh, ended up winning the event. And uh, two strokes out of Player and also Jerry McGee. I was hoping that was going to take me to his uh, playing, playing partners. partners the it, question it did not. Is you, you asked that Chris Raby asked on Twitter, I, I, we do not have the sound up, but it seemed low-key from green to T area. It didn't seem like a lot of exhortation of, it's almost like they are backing off like the dugout. Just just what I just saw, I may, may have it wrong. If I'd had the sound, it might have been far different. But it did not seem like, you know, you demand, go get them. 59, here we come. Pluto, on the way. <laughs> Here's what we got for the show today. We got a lot of things to talk about. Today. There's a whole lot of stuff. I mean, look look at look at this sheet that I got today for the show. That's just, Holy we got cow. We got too much show uh, today to get it all in before 6 o'clock, but we're going to try our darndest. Swing State or 7? Uh, well, I don't know. I got plans. Okay. Going over to Jim's uh, Jim's place tonight. Good place. So, uh, yeah, I'm I got an auto zone bar. I got to go. Well, another great place. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe you should stop by Jim's uh, before. On Maybe your way. I will. I'm just, uh, just throwing that out there. You you can meet some more people that I'll introduce you to. <laughs> <laughs> That's you're familiar with Jim's place, right? Do I need a hello, my name is <laughs> sticker up on me? <laughs> uh, we will have our top I'm and Brad, nice to meet you. <laughs> our top and not top stories uh, coming up. Also, uh, Tom Bowen, the uh, athletics director at the University of Memphis, he is going to join us coming up uh, here on the program coming up later this hour. Uh, we've talked a lot about the American this week. They had their media days and. A lot of good press, I think, not only for the conference, but uh, a lot of good press, I think, for those who have met Justin Fuente for the first time. And we visited with Ralph Russo, the Associated mm -hmm. Press, a couple days ago. He had glowing things to say about Coach Fuente. I know in my life, well, you know, Coach, when, when I first started watching and following and going to Tiger football and enjoying and liking Tiger football, Coach Murphy was – close to the end, four, five, six years to the end of his Hall of Fame illustrious career. And I can remember the the air of good feeling for Richard Williamson and the start that he had, the air of good feeling for Rex Dockery, and then the air of good feeling for Ray Dempsey, more so because of the tragedy of losing Rex Dockery. I don't remember Charlie Bailey having that. I'm not saying he didn't. I just don't. I don't recall it. Uh, Chuck Stobart. I don't remember it. I just don't. I, I I don't know if he did or didn't. I just don't recall it. He, I say that Rip Shearer did have it. I I remember that. I think Tommy West had it, but it was a little muted. It wasn't. It wasn't over the top. Thursday. And so so my point is, we've been here before mm -hmm. with. New Tiger coaches now in his second year for Justin Fuente with a, with some hope around the program. But I, I do feel something in there. I, I think there's something there about him and about this time in the Tiger program. And I, I think that's good. We've been here before. And most every one of those cases, well, Richard Williamson ended – 
bad wreck. Rex Dockery, it was tragedy. It could, could not be helped. Uh, Ray Dempsey ended badly. Charlie Bailey ended badly. Rip Shear ended badly. Chuck Sobart, Rip Shear. So, and he knows that. It's eyes wide open about what he faces. I think he is a tough, hard-nosed football coach that is thinking about football just about every waking moment. Mm-hmm. And that's good. He has not been to the mountaintop in, as a head coach, and he he's young and hungry. Absolutely. I, I've been very impressed when we've had him on the air, when he's been on other shows or – you know, hearing him speak. Just, just squeezing out forward last year his, after the opening day disaster. Yeah, his press conference, I think his honesty, I think just his, he is always really focused on football. And, you know, he, from all accounts, I'm not a recruiting guy by any stretch of the imagination, but from all accounts, he's he's done really well recruiting. You know, he's not going out getting five-star guys and stealing guys from SEC schools, but he's getting good players and a good amount of good players that, you know, he's kept some in town, and he's gone elsewhere to get some. He's gotten a couple of uh, transfers that can help the program immediately. So he's done a – I think he's done a lot of good on the recruiting trail. And that's that's the that's the biggest thing, you know, is you got to get players first. You can be a great coach, but you got to go out and get players, and, and I think he's been able to do that. And I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, a couple of years of getting those type of players and seeing what kind of coach he is because – they looked like a football team last year, and they competed really hard all season and never stopped playing hard, even when the year was going miserably poorly. Uh, and that just shows with the way they finished Rob, the season the last night, year. Everybody had penciled in 0-12. Oh. Yeah. And, and in that recitation of Tiger co- coaches, I, I intentionally I intentionally left off Larry Porter. Larry Porter, a person that I like, I think is a quality quality person and a good football coach. He was not a head coach, and there's just no need in kicking him no. when he's down. He he played hard for this program. He gave it his all. He's a good person. That that, that was just an error. Uh, here are the texts. E-R-R-O-R, not Correct. E-R-A. Uh, text that we've gotten on Tiger, we have four, 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 greatest golfer ever, against, can't stand him, against, he's a jerk, not a good example to younger golfers, against because I'm Elon, <laughs> Get her number. Four, yeah, it's, Snag uh, that number. Her number is 901. Uh, a four. She lives in the 901? Yeah, I did not know. Uh, got a four, got an against with six exclamation points. Uh, four, Tiger, win or lose. Against, don't like him. And I just made a mistake leaving out Fred Pancoast. Uh, Texter asked me, how about him in that? No. So, uh, so a lot of four. Uh, and a couple of them, I like the uh, the E on the end of four uh, as well. This Tiger uh, on 59 watch here this afternoon. He has, what are we at now, three holes to play? Is that right? Playing. Yeah, three holes to play. He's got, he's got the par five now and then two par fours, and he needs to basically go two under on those three holes Poor to get he, a 59. He just doesn't want to do something to get in the way, does he? Oh, I mean, like, hit a ball where you have to look for it for 10 minutes? And, and, no, you and, don't want that at all. Th- there's no cut in this tournament, so g- get to it and do whatever you got to do pretty quick. Can I pick up? We good? No, no, you can't go in the pocket. You don't get a check on, on Sunday for that, yeah. but let's, 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 let's okay. don't tarry. Tiger had a great drive, by the way, on the uh, par 5, 16. Uh, also today on the show, Ron Tillery is going to join us. You know, Ron's back from vacation. He's been on the Sports Time program the last uh, couple of mornings, and he's been a very busy fella uh, today on the Twitter uh, as well. Uh, the story today, of course, the about the Grizzlies camp. Uh, they'll have part of their camp in Nashville. They'll open up the preseason October 7th against the Chicago Bulls in St. Louis. Also, they... Um, Apparently, they are still a meeting with Mo Williams. Uh, hope to hear a idea, or I hope to hear a decision from Mo Williams soon. Uh, and according to Ron's story today, they're not opposed to dealing Tony Roten. Possibly could be shopped around. Also from Ron this afternoon, Elston Turner looks like he will be hired as the lead assistant. Uh, for the Grizzlies, Dave Yeager's staff, Elston Turner, could be uh, hired as that lead assistant. So uh, that would be a great hire, I think. It, Very good coach and uh, obviously some local ties as well. So and, so with that, it's 6-7-1-2-9. Far against Tiger. Like, don't like Nashville. And if you're of a Tigers, Memphis Tigers. Persuade, Grizzlies going to Nashville, not Nashville overall, right? 
No, no, no. Just play, go in there to play yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. And, and train. And what about you? I'm, I'm, I'm all I'm for it. I'm, I'm fine, but you got to expand this brand. I and, think the Grizzlies. And third, if you're of a Tiger football persuasion, do you feel an air of good feeling and hope for the future, or is it same old, same old? I, I feel the former, not the latter. I think the going to Nashville is great because the Grizzlies always wanting to expand the region. And in the playoffs last year, there was a lot of interest in Nashville, which was great. Mm -hmm. So I, I think going there for a week of camp is, is fantastic. Went to Birmingham, Birmingham. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm all for it. I think it's great. I like that they're playing a game in St. Louis against the Bulls, and thanks to the Bulls for helping out there. Grizzlies are not allowed to host games outside of FedEx Forum, uh, according to their lease. So basically they need another team to help. Uh, and the Bulls, it'll be a Bulls home game in St. Louis, but I think that's good for the Grizzlies to branch out there. It'd be great if, you know, Atlanta wants to host a game in Nashville or somewhere in Tennessee that they could go play, and, you know, maybe New Orleans come up a little bit into Mississippi and play a game and host a game with the Grizzlies possibly in the future. So I think those are things you'd like to look at uh, is expanding your brand. I thought I retweeted it from our friend Josh Coleman at Three Shades of Blue. You can follow him on Twitter at 3SOB. And I retweeted one of his tweets today. And it, it reads, the Grizzlies need to extend their brand and fan base as much as possible. That means across Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Kentucky, Missouri, and Arkansas for starters. He had another one, and I don't know if I can call it verbatim, but it was basically, and I, I, I must say I was one of these type of snoots down the stretch at FedEx for me. And he, he wasn't saying that, but he just said he got a kick out of the, the same, some of the same people that are irritated at, at, at this. You heard around playoff time, hey, who are all the new people? Right. You know, who are all the bandwagon people? You need them. Absolutely. I mean, it's like the Christmas and Easter only crowd during, at church. During the playoffs, they during, might see something they like and come back the next week. During the playoffs, the Grizzlies were on the front page of the Nashville newspaper. I mean, that that's great. And that's great. and the television network is branching out, which is which is great. I mean, Nashville picked up a lot of games last year, and I know when to Arkansas picking up a lot of games last year, and I they want to do more of that, which I think is great. You know, more people to see this we face. We want it crowded. We want parking trouble. <laughs> Don't we? We, we? we want the, the restaurant that for that Tuesday night against Milwaukee. We walk right into the table. We don't have a table. And I want more people to just say, what the heck are you wearing, man? <laughs> What's up with that? Yeah. Also, Bano Udra. Or the, the players call you Nation. The Nation, yeah. <laughs> uh, also, Bano Udra. Apparently, Grizzlies are uh, showing some interest in Bano as well. Uh, also today. If I could text in. I'd text in against that. Yeah, I know you would. I know. Uh, today, five more schools opening up camp, uh, five more football programs opening up camp in the uh, SEC, Alabama, Auburn, Florida, South Carolina, and Tennessee all opening today. Ole Miss will open tomorrow. They're having their media day today. Parrish Alford from the Daily Journal will join us uh, for that coming up uh, later in the show as well. Plus, we'll have some nuggets from all those camps. Pete Roussel will join us from CoachingSearch.com as he does each Friday. And we have a Friday 5 at 5 today. You're the athletics director at the University of Texas. You're DeLoss Dodds. And Mac Brown calls it quits at the end of the year. Or you, you make a move. You at call the it quits for him. Right. Who are the five on your short list? The proverbial index card with five names on it that we're told all the good athletics directors have always had compiled. My first response to you is one through five, John Gruden. Easy. <laughs> exactly. But, but I've actually come up with a different. But we're trying to go realism. Yeah. Um. <laughs> got a text that says for Tiger, good to expand the brand and hopeful future for Tiger football. So yes, got them all in there. Thank you very much. By the way, Tiger's third shot not very good. He's gonna no. he's gonna par this one. Matsuyama's was go up there and spot that. It was in the way. So now More Tiger likely. is going to have a third par in a row. Now he has to go two under on the final two holes. So now all of a sudden this whole fifty nine watch up. We just got you all excited for nothing. And fifty eight is not gonna happen. No. So we apologize unless he sinks this one. But I'm done. How about a top story today? Top story of the day. What you got? Major League Baseball on the field, not the soap opera, not the PED, not the kicking the can. And now we read where, you know, they, they don't want to affect the playoffs. Well, that can't be that big a, a crime, something sinister to the respect to the grand old game if we're going to do that. But anyway, the story on the field, very real possibility on this first Friday in August with a lot of baseball to play, 
very real. This could be your CSs, ALCS. Tampa Bay versus Cleveland. NLCS, Braves versus Pittsburgh. I would love it. I know the honchos and the bean counters yeah, at cares? Fox. But, but it, right, that, that sailed a long time You know ago. what? People didn't watch Miami-Indiana either, and it was an exceptional mm-hmm. basketball but, series. But if, if you like it, you're going to watch. Right. And it, if you don't, then go watch. If you're a baseball fan, you'll watch. Go you'll watch, watch the, the show with the dome over the country. <laughs> I, I thought that was real. <laughs> Apparently not. I hadn't watched it. I haven't seen one bit of it either. Uh, not top story. Sorry. Not top story of the day. Stats you remember Don Terry Poe. <laughs> yes, Rob. I've, I've got a picture of him at a Saints-Chiefs game I went to last year. I, I hadn't slipped this badly. I still can remember some things. The former Memphis Tiger and uh, current Chiefs defensive tackle uh, had the best of both worlds growing up in Memphis, moving to Kansas City when it comes to barbecue. Uh, there you go. Well, he had half. Well, he had the best. I mean, he still has it okay. The Kansas City barbecue is but, one of the more overrated. Oh, I, I I agree, but but at least there's and there's you can't find barbecue. a good Kansas City strip in Kansas City. Uh, however, no, that's true. Uh, however, he wants to be a smaller man for his second NFL season, and that meant it was time to. Uh, well, he had to give it up. He is what he calls the hardest thing I've had to do since I've been here. Dropped between 15 and 20 pounds off his frame. Says he ate a lot of eggs in the morning, ate a lot of protein, grilled chicken, grilled fish, stuff like that. I'm trying to cut out the beef and the pork and stay away from fried foods and stay away from barbecue. I I think I can stay away from fried. I cannot stay away from barbecue. He said, the hardest thing he's ever had to do. No, I couldn't. I don't know if I could, and I don't know why I would because... Oh, poor Don Terry Poe. Yeah, staying away from the barbecue. I've had 51 good trips Mm. on the odometer, so I'm going to keep eating pork. (laughs) Oh, what else do we need to get in quickly before we get to the break? Um, Oh, some good stuff from Larry Scott, the Pac-12 commission tonight, talking about uh, NBA eligibility, college basketball. Cardinals won last night. You're back on board, right? I told you I'd be back on board once the series was over. Yeah, snap that seven-game skid, 13-0. Here come the Cardinals. I knew Joe Kelly would get it done. Who didn't? <laughs> My goodness. Also, um, so we got that Larry Scott thing. Some other baseball stuff, too. You know, the MLS, they want to go to 24 teams. Go right Yeah, in. how about that? All right, Tiger was just parred. Come on, Tiger. Oh, that's just weak. Still at 13 under for the tournament. Five. They get Nine enough. under today. He's got two holes left, both par fours. If he can birdie them both, 59. If not, man, well, we talked a lot about it for nothing. Tom Bowen joins us next here on Fish and Stats. The Press Box with Keith Parker and Elliot Wender. 1 to 2, Monday through Friday on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't become paralyzed by fear. Take action now. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help. Our team of experienced tax attorneys can get you protected. Stop collections and negotiate a permanent settlement with the IRS and state, potentially saving you thousands of dollars. At U.S. Tax Shield, our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. No games and no tricky upsells. That's why we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Put an end to your torment. Get protected. Get the shield. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 800-299-1855. That's 800-299-1855. 800-299-1855. The name has changed and so have the deals. AutoNation GMC Mendenhall is lighting up the market with incredible lease specials. For example, a 2013 Terrain for $199 a month for 39 months and a 2013 Acadias for $299 a month for 39 months. And don't forget the summer sell down on all 2013 Sierras. Discounts up to 10,000 off MSRP while they last. So hurry over to AutoNation GMC Mendenhall for all your GMC needs. 
No matter what size, every business is unique and driven to improve results. What's right for one might not be right for you. It all depends on your business and your goals. Trying to grow revenue, focused on cutting costs, or simply need a better way to get work done? XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, can help. We offer exceptional Xerox products and are proud to provide cost-effective office equipment and electronic document management. Visit XMCINC.com and allow XMC to help boost productivity, enhance collaboration, and reduce costs at your office. Call 737-8910. That's 737-8910. Nine ten. Did you get Abe Lincoln's Snapchat? It totally emancipated my thinking. Yeah, people didn't realize that he wasn't just a progressive leader. He was also a humorist. And that Spotify playlist from Brahms put me to sleep. Marie Antoinette keeps posting pics of cake, hoping people will like her. I totes commented, hashtag abolish monarchy, hashtag guillotine. What a drama queen. Alex Bell keeps tweeting at me. Just because he invented the phone doesn't mean he can keep blowing up mine. Smartphones are like tutors that work 24-7, so send your student back to school with a smartphone from Sprint. Buy one Samsung Galaxy S4 for $199.99 or a Galaxy S3 for $99.99 and get the same model free after $50 mail-in rebate. Make the most of your new phones with unlimited data and 4G LTE, all while on the Sprint network. Visit a Sprint store or Sprint.com. All Marins A 1513 rebate gear reward card. Coverage and offer not everywhere or on all plans. Subject to two-year agreement, credit, activation, and early termination fee. Excludes taxes, network use, rules, and restrictions apply. See store for details. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It's 3.30. I'm Bash. The second round of the Bridgestone Invitational Firestone Country Club's underway, and Tiger Woods is looking like the Tiger we all remember. Woods opened his round today with Birdie Eagle Birdie en route to a 30 on the front nine. It's at 13 under with two holes left to play. Nine under for the day, so if you can birdie the final two, you can post a 59. Keegan Bradley is in the clubhouse tied for second. He's at six under. Obviously, there are a few strokes behind Tiger. As far as suspensions related to the biogenesis case are concerned in Major League Baseball, CBS Sports is reporting that players the players have a deadline to accept their suspensions to be, appears to be on Sunday, and announcements are likely to follow on Monday. Alex Rodriguez is report, reportedly trying to cut a deal with Major League Baseball that will keep him off the field but avoid a lifetime ban. Who knows what will end up happening there, or when for that matter. As a result of the Biogenesis scandal, Ryan Braun has lost yet another sponsor. This time it's a big one. Nike has ended any relationship with Braun, just adding to the list. It's one day game going on right now in the big leagues as the Dodgers are in Chicago to take on the Cubs. L.A. leads that one 1-0 one in the first. A couple of quick NBA notes for you as well. No news on Mo Williams since this morning when Ron Taylor of the Commercial Appeal reported. Veteran free agent guard is close to choosing his next NBA team. Grizzlies are in the running for his services, along with Utah, Miami, San Antonio, and New York. Sports Reports brought to you by Dixie Pickers, located at 99 North Center Street in Collierville, and open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 5. Dixie Pickers should be your one-stop shop for fine southern apparel and classic sports memorabilia. Visit them online at DixiePickersStore.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Fish and Stats just underway on a busy, busy Friday afternoon. Keep you posted on Tiger Woods on the 59 watch. Two holes to go. Only to birdie them both or an eagle one of them to get to the number 59. But right now, we're going to talk some uh, Tigers. Earlier this week, the American Athletic Conference had their media days, and uh, Justin Fuente spoke there. And uh, later in the week, we had Ralph Russo from the Associated Press joined us uh, after he had tweeted out some uh, interesting things about Coach Fuente and was very impressed. And Ralph sits in the biggest chair in the Associated Press world at the college football desk in New York City. And it was his first time being able to sit down and talk with Coach Fuente, and here's what he had to say about the Memphis Tigers coach. Yeah, you know, I had never had a chance uh, to meet Coach Fuente uh, until up in Rhode Island uh, yesterday. So, you know, I sort of made it a point, especially with the newer coaches, to always try to catch up with them for a little bit. And, you know, listen, I'm not going to profess to be, you know, have a, have a deep and vast knowledge of Memphis's roster. And, you know, the, you can probably, you know, fill, uh, if you took all the, the, the time I spent watching Memphis play last year, trying to catch, I, I try to catch as many games as possible. Uh, you know, uh, if I saw 15 minutes of Memphis football last year, I, you know, I think I might be surprised. <laughs> but but my the impression I got from meeting him is he, he sort of projected a vibe of intensity and sort of getting a guy who sort of gets it. Um, in my 10 or 15 minute interview slash conversation, he re- reminded me a little bit of Butch Jones, who's a guy I've always you know thought really highly of in the fact that even when he is 
in sort of a casual situation, he sort of exudes a certain amount of intensity to him. Um, I, I like his, when we talked about the idea of rebuilding the program, and he talked about trying to really, you know, we didn't really talk much X, X's and O's and recruiting and what kind of body types and things like that and systems as much as just sort of in, in the, the, the problems that, you know, he inherited were lack of discipline, lack of commitment, lack of loyalty to each other, lack of, um, you know, lack of focus among the players. But he also didn't necessarily blame the players, which I thought was a pretty interesting thing when we talked about it. You know, he's, you know, listen, my job is not necessarily to look at a guy and say, you lack focus, you lack commitment, you lack, you know, dedication and get rid of you. My job is to teach you what it means to have those qualities. You know, cause, cause it might not be your fault that you don't have them. You may have never had it taught to you correctly. So, you know, again, mm-hmm. uh, listen, you know, whether he is the next, you know, is he a guy who's going to, you know, put Memphis football on the map and bring him into a top 25? I, I don't know if I would, I, I don't know enough about that. I don't know enough to, to make, maybe make that statement, but I was impressed with what he said, how he said it, and sort of the way he carried himself. So again, my impression was, I, I think this is a guy who, you know, Memphis made a good I think Memphis football seems to be in pretty good hands with this guy. Joining us now to talk more of Memphis Tigers is the athletics director of the University of Memphis. Tom Bowen is with us. Tom, good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, Fish. How are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, you know, we, we had Ralph on, and Stats and I, right. we, we have Ralph on a lot and, and both really respect the work that he does with college football. And, you know, he goes to the media days, and, and he had a lot of high praise to say about uh, Coach Fuente. I, I, I think that was great uh, to come out of this week with – hearing that from a lot of people with their first impression of Coach. Yeah, I would uh, tell you Ralph was uh, was there, and it was great to see him take time with uh, Justin. And I would tell you, as we all know, that have been around Justin Fuente and around his staff and, and his leadership, that he's an extraordinary young football coach who is doing things the right way on a daily basis. And even how he handled himself in the very intense national media dynamic and the the American Athletic Conference football at Newport. Uh, I was there with him for two days, and he was just, I, in my opinion, he was he was perfect for how we are at Memphis and what, what he said to the nation and to the local writers and to the ESPN people and to the radio people about us and then how we are every day working to become better and that we can't focus on what people think about us. We can focus on each other and what we're going to become. And it's exciting right now for what will happen in, in about – four and a half weeks on September 7th in the Liberty Bowl against Duke. So it's going to be an exciting uh, season for us. I think we're going to be competitive. Tom, it is exciting, and he's not alone. There are a lot of voices out there that feel this excitement about you, your department, football, and, of course, men's basketball, and just the arc of of good tidings. I, I really feel like you're sitting on something big, and I know you do. Well, Stats, I appreciate that very much. I, I do think that, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into when you start to build a program. I think we are going to benefit from a very um, favorable start to the season in the way we're scheduled. You know, obviously we don't play opening weekend. We play the next weekend, September 7th, as I said, at 3.30 at home. And then we go to Middle Tennessee State, and then we come back and play Arkansas State at home. And then we have a bye. And then we'll pick uh, the American Conference. We get Central Florida back in our stadium, which I think is a positive. And that's on you know, October 5th. And we, then we're at Houston. Then we're SMU home again. And then we're on national TV on October 30th against Cincinnati. So, you know, the first eight weeks of uh, college football, we're home, six, five of those, and uh, and have the opportunity to stay in the state to play six games. So and, and, it's and exciting. I, and I even like that you guys aren't starting opening weekend because in, uh, around a lot of places it, it's – become a little bit of a problem for live gate on that Labor Day weekend. I like that you're starting the next weekend, and I think people will be just really thirsting for some football in this area. And with any weather break, I think you're going to have something in the 50s and maybe higher as for a crowd. And I, I know you're r- really, really shooting for that. We are, Seth. And I would say this is another kind of the detail that drives Coach Puente. This was one of the details that he and I talked about, and we agreed that it would be good to leave this by alone. We could have put an opponent in there when we were setting up some of the non-conference, and we thought it would be better to have this opportunity. And it's going to bear well for our guys and bear well for our student-athletes and our coaches and 
of prep time and uh, really help this young, dynamic offense as they start to get going to kind of get going. So it's going to be good. Tom Bowen with us, uh, AD at the University of Memphis. Tom, you're the third person we've had on the air this week that I, I want to have this discussion with, and, and I've wanted to have it with you first, uh, actually, but save the best for last, I guess. Um, you know, the move to the Big East, it, it, it felt so exciting, and then and then things kind of changed, uh, I guess, for, for lack of a better term. Got a little scary. And, and did get scary, and, and at a point kind of felt like there was the doom and gloom kind of mood, but... But I feel like that's gone away. And when when you hear people speak about Mike Oresco, when you hear what Mike Oresco talks about at, at the media days, when we've had you on the show talking about the future of not only the program but the future with the conference, I, I feel like the leadership in this conference and at the University of Memphis is very calm about it and very confident about it. And because of that confident aura, I guess, I – I, f- I feel like it's a lot better than maybe initially we thought. Well, I, you know, Fish, I appreciate that. I, I would tell you that I, I do believe the American Athletic Conference is going to surprise a lot of the football uh, fans and, and, the, and the football writers and, and followers in how this conference comes together this season with a kind of a hybrid. You know, you've got Louisville for one more year. You've got Rutgers in here right now. You've got Cincinnati under Tommy Coverville and, you have a lot of programs getting very active and becoming better and more competitive, scheduling better. And I think with our new partner ESPN, which is the real valuable piece for us in ways that are kind of profound, this will be the first time that this football program, Memphis Tigers being one, will be on ESPN. Our game against Duke will be on ESPN3. We'll be part of Sports Center. We'll be part of the highlights. We'll be part of that whole energy and excitement that is college football that starts in August and runs till the end of December. So I do think those are exciting for us. It's great stability for our conference. When the Big East dynamic happened, there was the fear that we would not have ESPN. And of course, that didn't happen. And we were able to sign with ESPN. And when that happened, I think it really stabilized the American Athletic Conference as a full comprehensive conference. In the past with the Big East, there were the basketball onlys and there was that dynamic, and now all membership plays football at the highest level, plays basketball at the highest level. What are you, what are you and your department, what are you all doing for a season ticket push, and when will it be unveiled? Okay. Well, so you'll see the new commercials. We, uh, you know, after last year's success with the, with the on a television piece, that'll start breaking out here very shortly in the next couple of days. We've um, been very proactive in how we've designed our ticket uh packages and, and some creative ideas that we have that I think will work very well with um, the, 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 because the Liberty Bowl doesn't have a very doesn't have any really bad seats in it. It's it a does not. wonderful stadium to come watch college football in. And the real thing that we did is last year is myself and some members of my staff made a lot of notes in a in kind of a, a weekly journal about how we were experiencing, you know, Liberty Bowl and Tiger football for the first time. And so then we've met the last couple of days and have redesigned how the day of game experience is going to is going to go off and how we're going to be more engaged with our fans and more customer service and more customer friendly and more fan friendly and really focus on the atmosphere of the pregame leading up to the game and then, you know, kind of the postgame as well. So I think you're going to see some exciting changes. We're working really hard with the Alumni Association and bringing back a concept known as the Big Ten and some other ideas. So I, mean, I think it's going to be good. I really do. You know, the first year of a new coach, it always it, it seems like that's the exciting one. That's the the hopeful one. Everyone gets on board and is excited about moving forward. It feels like the second year is even feels more like the first year for Justin Fuente because it it feels like there is more of a a buzz. You know, the scoreboard's now in. Tiger Lane's now old. I mean, it's right. been there now. He, uh, you know, good we know about. It. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the honeymoon's been pretty good. That it feels like now it's there. There is more buzz this off season. Well, I also think, remember, that we've had these student-athletes, these young men have been with us for a season, for the off-season, for our spring, and then for our summer. We, we kept all our football players, all our student-athletes and others on campus to go to summer school and to be here every day, which was a new beginning for this football program that hasn't happened in the past. And so every day these guys have been in class and, and they've been out working out and getting ready. And So those are going to be some things about us that should make us very exciting to watch in the beginning and very tenable and very hard to beat. Very uh, and very competitive. As the as the boss, when you go to football or to or to basketball practice or any of your uh, sports practices to watch any of your coaches, what what do you what do you really want to come away and when when you when you walk away? I'm glad I saw that. Well, I, I 
you know, I mean, all my time. I, I think, you know, and, I, and I've rebuilt now. This is my third football program, Division One, to kind of get started. I did first with Dick Tomey, then Mike McIntyre, and now. But Justin, you just you have to watch the energy and the excitement and the and uh, and how focused the student athletes are on what the coaches are doing and saying and teaching. And what I've come away with the times I've been to practice with Justin and with Josh and with Melissa and others that. My student athletes are focused and they're listening and they're paying attention and they're working hard to be better. And, you know, they're not guys standing around with their arms folded. They're not guys looking around. There aren't guys, little groups of guys in silos. There's an intensity that Justin's brought as far as an accountability practice that, in my opinion, will begin to translate into some very competitive games. Yeah, as intense as he is, Tom, I, I would highly suggest uh, have the helmet on, chin strap tightened up, mouthpiece in, and both eyes on him. <laughs> and on, stay on the sideline. Yeah. No question, Seth. You do not want to be daydreaming and practicing. No, <laughs> no. And, and I like that intensity. I like that, 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 that he's running hot. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he's, a, he's a very, very good teacher. Uh, I'm excited because we've now had a lot, we, meaning all of us, but mostly coaching his staff. And the other real positive that we want to share is that his entire coaching staff has stayed another season. And in our business, there tends to be a lot of change for coaches to get, as we had some late success, get picked off and take another, other opportunities. And these, these men have all stayed to be part of this with him. And I think that speaks volumes about him. Tom, all other uh, exciting news uh, around the basketball program uh, with the news that uh, game day will be yeah. in for the Gonzaga uh, game. That's always that's always great for the city, great for the program, and uh, certainly uh, you know we talk about the big year moving into the new conference in, in in football, basketball. We'll be talking about there that here shortly too. I, I volunteer to babysit Digger Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Digger since I was a student at Notre Dame. That goes back to 1982. So. <laughs> be interesting to see him again. Did, uh, I, did you ever play in bookstore basketball? No yeah, we we all did. The, the, you know, I was in the seminary. The seminary had a team. We uh, we had five guys. We we couldn't shoot. Not neat. But nobody really wanted to beat us. They're afraid. You know, we pray about them. So, um, <laughs> so we had, we had a pretty good team. It was uh, it was fun, and uh, I'm excited about game day because what it'll bring it'll bring a national day to the city of Memphis. To obviously to us, the forum. It'll be shot all downtown, which would be great. It's going to be a really big deal, and it's against Gonzaga, which yeah. is even better. So it'll be a great, great day. Absolutely. How, how close are you on, uh, on on a release of men's mid, basketball? Uh, mid, Mid-August, uh, Tom Ojekian and I were talking, and it's probably another 10 days, 8 to 10 days. There's some television pieces in it, and because of Louisville being in this this process and defending national championship, there's a lot of, of, of need or desire to have them on TV. So it's about getting the dates and uh, getting the dates clear with the form. Even on the way out, Tom, is it important for, for Louisville, Patino, Charlie Strong, Tom Jurich, is it important for them to be advocates of the, the American Conference even on the way out? Yeah, yeah, because they're part of its founding. Remember, this is a BCS conference that's for the first year of its existence is going to have an automatic qualifier in a BCS game. So we have six bowl ties in football plus a BCS AQ, which is, you know, be kind of part of the record books. One year as a conference and you're automatically in the BCS. So yeah, it's very important. So just in good spirit, we can detest Louisville, but we kind of need to thank them <laughs> and hope they say nice. Yeah. And, they, and they really have been, they have. you know, been great. saying good things. They've been great. Absolutely. They've been very, very good. Well, Tom Bone, we appreciate you taking some time out to join us today. Thank well, you so much. Summer fish, went quick, didn't it? <laughs> it did. Fish and stats, I'm honored to be on your show as always. All, thank you, guys. Thank you all. Two weeks of summer was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> we'll talk to you uh, right when we get started with this season. Thank you, sir. You bet. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, Tom Bowen uh, joining us, AD at the University of Memphis. We will take a break. Uh, we will come back, wrap up this first hour. Ty, Tigers, it just... Psh. I mean, 18, he, he, he's, he's seen the whole... He's seen everything. He didn't walk on the moon. He didn't walk on Pluto. He's walking on the beach. He's going to get like a 62. Yeah. And have like an eight-stroke lead. He doesn't have any more. I told you. <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> Come back. Wrap up this hour. Fish and stats. Sports 56, 877 FM. Did you miss your favorite Sports 56 show? Check out the podcast at sports56whbq.com. <laughs> Roofing Solutions. 
Productions. I'm Brian Elder, builder of the roof on the 2013 St. Jude Dream Home. And now I'm proud to announce builder of the roofs of all six houses in this year's Vesta Home Show. Call me, 867-0303. Let me climb on your roof. My team of expert craftsmen will provide you with options from an inexpensive repair with a full warranty to a complete new roof system with a lifetime warranty. We are among the few certified builders of standing seam metal roofs, guaranteed to outlive your grandkids and more affordable than you might think. Call me, 867-0303. I can measure your roof from outer space and give you an estimate right over the phone. Financing available. A beautiful metal roof will be the envy of the neighborhood. 867-0303 or brianelderroofing.com. Call 867-0303. Brian Elder's Roofing Solutions. Hi folks, Rob Walker, Infinity of Memphis, with a message of hope for anyone struggling with the challenge of buying a used car. We understand your concerns as you search the online marketplace. Has it been maintained? What's getting ready to go wrong with it as soon as I buy it? Am I buying someone else's nightmare? Can I buy a warranty? What's a warranty? Us. Relax. Relax. When you buy a used vehicle from Infinity of Memphis, you get a free lifetime powertrain warranty. So what happens if the engine has a problem? It's no problem. If the transmission has a problem, the drive shaft, rear end, or front wheel drive has a problem, or if an axle universal joint or bearing has a problem, it's no problem. And it's no problem for as long as you own the vehicle. No mileage limit, no time limit, no deductible, no hassle, and it's free. Go to infinityofmemphis.com and browse our inventory. Why would you buy a used car anywhere else? Not all makes qualify, but most do. See infinityofmemphis.com for details. Frontier Western Store and Olive Branch is pleased to announce their biggest back-to-school savings sale in history. All children's and youth jeans are marked down. Wrangler and Carhartt jeans are $5 off. Kids Miss Me jeans, $10 off. All kids' shirts, buy one, get one free. Yes, you heard that right. Every children's shirt, short sleeve, clearance, and new long sleeve, buy one, get a second free. Browning, Cotton Logo, Ducks Unlimited, and Carhartt for kids. And when it comes to boots, Frontier is the place for kids of all ages and young adults. Frontier has an unbelievably wide assortment for dress and play, whether they need boots by John Deere, Justin, or Ariat that are just as tough as Dad's, or dress boots from Smoky Mountain or Corral. Frontier can fit them in a pair. So come on in today and load up on the savings at Frontier's Back to School Sale. Frontier Western Store, 5880 Goodman Road, Olive Branch, or on the web at FrontierWesternStore.com. Family owned and operated since 1967. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Fish and Stats with you on this Friday afternoon. Next hour, Ron Tillery will join us. Also, we're going to talk a little Ole Miss football. They open up camp tomorrow, have their media day today. Parrish Alford will join us. We'll talk some Grizzlies with Ron. Coming up later, our Friday 5 at 5 today. You are making a hire at the University of Texas after this season. Mac Brown steps down. Mac Brown's four step. Whatever. Mac Brown goes undefeated and goes out on top. That's the big. That's the big school that soon is going to need a football coach. In this year, next year, or 2015. Yeah. yeah. But the the big one. I mean, when you talk about the big ones in the country, they they might be the ultimate big one. Might have an argument from a few others, and but they they're right. It? But they'll probably have one before any of the other bigs. And they could be out there in a marketplace this year with USC. Who's on your short list? Your five. You got, you got that little note card in your back pocket, and those are the first five people you're calling. That's our Friday five at five today, and you can uh, text those in at six seven one two nine or join us in the five o'clock hour. Hey, John Makovic and David McWilliams is not on. No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think they are. Who uh, disastrous <laughs> runs at Texas? How do you have a disastrous run at Texas? I don't know. Alabama, they open up today. And, of course, they have two practices today. I uh, had one this morning at 9.30, 7.30 tonight. Uh, freshman running back Derrick Henry is back. And uh, from all reports, they're going to have to find a spot for this kid. He's going to be phenomenal, apparently. You know they got that Yeldon guy that's pretty good, too. You got, got Alty Tenpenny, the number one back in Arkansas, too. Alabama, the only team in the SEC that returns a quarterback who passed for 30 touchdowns, a running back who rushed for more than 10 scores, and a receiver who caught more than 10 touchdown passes. Ken- Kenyon Drake would be a feature tailback for a lot of people. 
Question for Alabama, locking in the uh, combinations in the secondary. Jousting Fowler back, but he's more the short yardage hammer. Yeah. Auburn, first practice. They just got underway. Well, no, not yet. They're getting underway in about seven minutes. Auburn will start their fall camp. Uh, well, they need to find a quarterback. No separation between Kyle Frazier and Jonathan Wallace. Also, they have junior college newcomer Nick Marshall, who started his career at Georgia as a cornerback. And also true freshman Jeremy Johnson, all in the competition at quarterback. So, uh, running back Trey Mason returns. He had over 1,000 yards last year. Gus Malzahn has had a different starting quarterback every year he's been in college football, dating back to 2006 when he was the offensive coordinator at Arkansas. Eight different starting quarterbacks in eight years. How about that nugget from Gus? That's remarkable. So can he do it with he had a good, anybody? He had a good quarter, a great quarterback last year at Arkansas State in Ryan Applin. They will have a different quarterback this year, Phillip Butterfield. I think the best quarterback in the state of Arkansas – is at Central Arkansas. Winrick Smothers could start at Fayetteville or at Arkansas State right now. Hmm. Speaking of Central Arkansas, Corliss Williamson, the head basketball coach, leaving to become an assistant coach with the Sacramento Kings. It was his favorite place he ever played, and his best buddy was like Arco Arena operations manager. Huh. He, he loved it out there. He loved Sacramento, and some of his best friends he developed in his NBA career was out there. He leaves Central Arkansas. He didn't do a bad job. It was a tough job the day he took it. He did a he did a pretty good job there. You know what his toughest task is right now? Oh, yeah. You're good, buddy. D.C. <laughs> Big old D.C. Big Nasty. Hi, DeMarcus, I take, meet Big Nasty. I, I take Corliss if it came to punches. I don't I'm know. not so sure. I wouldn't take Corliss. Marcus has got that crazy in him. I don't know if you could have heard him. One to ten, one on one. <laughs> if he'd spot Corliss to three, I think he'd take him. <laughs> Just three? Just spot him three? Mm -hmm. right. Maybe four. Uh, Florida Gators opening camp. They start camp without five players. Five starters are out. Driscoll, of course, has the uh, appendectomy. He's recovering from. Matt Jones has that viral infection. Ronald Powell's back from uh, two ACL injuries that cost him last season. Linebacker Matt Rowland and Trip Thurman, both injured. It could be limited during the fall. And uh, they have another linebacker, Alex Anzalone. Should be healed from a shoulder injury. That but was the, uh, he'll be oh, oh, so. uh, the Notre Dame commit that then flipped. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. They were 12th in total offense 2012. they got to find some pass catchers. Four true freshmen at receiver trying to earn a spot. Speaking of the great Corliss Williamson, I don't know how, why they haven't retired his number yet at Arkansas. That should have been done a long time ago, along with Scotty Thurman's. But his three years at Arkansas, losing the Sweet 16 to eventual national champion North Carolina, win it all as a sophomore and national runner-up as a junior. It's all right. Pretty good. Tiger Woods, 61. Course record and uh, his low as a pro. It's not bad. It's not 59, but it's pretty good. The well, excitement from 245 seems watered down, doesn't Man, it? Man, I wanted the show. Uh, I wanted hey. to run commercials for an hour. <laughs> he is at uh, 14 under par. Or no, I'm sorry, 13 under par. Pretty impressive. Seven stroke lead. We'll be back. By now you know Dixie Pickers in Collierville should be your one-stop shop for fine southern apparel and classic sports memorabilia. Come in today and visit Dixie Pickers' new location, which is four times larger than the original store and located at 99 North Center Street and still in the heart of the Collierville Town Square. Come in and check out their Yeti coolers. Wildly stronger, keeps ice longer. It's the core you've always wanted and the last one you'll ever need. They're dry ice compatible and certified bear resistant. Dixie Pickers also has Costa Del Mar sunglasses. Costa Sun glasses see what's out there go to dixie pickers and check out the new styles for 2013 dixie pickers also carry southern point mojo sportswear true flies jack black and much much more dixie pickers vintage finds and fresh designs for southern gentlemen dixie pickers is your home for vintage vinyl comics trading cards and much more open monday through saturday from 10 to 6 call them today at 316-5391 or stay up to date with their inventory by liking dixie pickers on facebook 
There's no better time to come by Germantown Hardware and Paint to get yourself ready for another summer in the Mid-South. Germantown Hardware and Paint stocks the largest supply of Weber grills and accessories in the Mid-South. And now has added Holland grills to their extensive inventory. If you're looking for paint or stain, then look no further. Germantown Hardware and Paint has a complete line of Benjamin Moore paints. Why battle long lines and inexperienced staff at large commercial stores when you can get what you want right around the corner? With a promise of service and convenience, Justin and his staff are knowledgeable, friendly, and committed to make sure you are taken care of. Looking to get your yard looking better than ever? With brand names such as Toro, Echo, Steel, and Honda, whether it's chainsaws, lawnmowers, or blowers, Germantown Hardware and Paint has everything you need to get the job done right. If you need it, Germantown Hardware and Paint has it. Conveniently located at the corner of Poplar and Germantown Parkway, it's Germantown Hardware and Paint, the only real hardware store in the Mid-South. We've all been there. You hear your brakes squealing. You see the check engine light come on. You see a big stain on the garage floor after you pull your car out. Something's wrong and you're scared because you pull into a big retailer and you know it's going to cost you an arm and a leg just to get the car looked at. Well, Scott from Get Gone Auto's here and he says it doesn't have to be like that, right, Scott? No, Peter, it doesn't. Bigger isn't always better. I've worked for some of these other guys that are tripling and even quadrupling the prices of parts. And, and before you ever get your car looked at, they're asking for a $100 check out. We're not going to do that here. So Scott, what's the get gone auto difference? Peter, the difference is we're going to treat you like you deserve to be treated. We're going to give you a free estimate that the other guys won't and we're going to give you the price the other guys can't. And you know, to the big retailers, you're just another n- another number, another face in the crowd. We want to treat you like you deserve to be treated. You can find them on Facebook or better yet, give them a call. 901-316-5963. Get gone auto where your auto troubles get gone. Your home for the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis and 87.7 FM WPGFLP Memphis. The Flynn Broadcasting Station. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It's 4 o'clock. I'm Bash. The second round of the Bridgestone Invitational Firestone Country Club is wrapping up. Tiger Woods looked like the Tiger of old. Woods opened his round today with birdie, eagle, birdie, en route to a 30 on the front nine. He finished today, tying his own course record at 9-under for the round, firing a 61. Tiger is 13-under for the tournament. Keegan Bradley and Chris Wood tied for second at 6-under, obviously seven strokes back of good old Tiger. As far as the suspensions related to the Biogenesis case are concerned in Major League Baseball, CBS Sports is reporting that players' deadline to accept their suspension appears to be Sunday, and announcements are likely to follow on Monday. Alex Rodriguez was reportedly trying to cut a deal with Major League Baseball that will keep him off the field but avoid a lifetime ban. Who knows what will end up happening there or when, for that matter. As a result of the Biogenesis scandal, Ryan Braun has lost yet another sponsor. Nike has ended any relationship with Braun, just adding to the list of his losings, obviously. It's one day game going on right now in the big leagues. The Dodgers are in Chicago to take on the Cubs. Dodgers lead that one 2-1. to one. That one's in the top of the third. A couple of NBA notes as well. No news on Mo Williams since this morning when Ron Tillery of the commercial appeal Right here on Sports 56, reported that veteran free agent guard close to choosing his next NBA team. Grizzlies are in the running for his services, along with Utah Jazz, Miami Heat, San Antonio Spurs, of course, the New York Knicks. Former number one overall pick Greg Oden plans to choose his next team today. There's a couple of people on that list, including the Heat, Spurs, and the Mavericks. Sports reports brought to you by Country Ford. Whoever takes Country Ford gets it done for you. Visit Country Ford in South Haven at 95 East Goodman Road or shop online at countryford.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, good people. 61 for Tiger, career low for Tiger Woods. Course record, you know, he held the course record at Firestone. 61 uh, for Tiger today. Pretty, uh, Pretty darn impressive. Last time Tiger shot a 61 at Firestone in 2000, he won by 11... 11 shots. He's going to win that by that this weekend. He's up seven, I believe. Seven going into the weekend. And sets up Over for Chris a, Wood. And sets up for a great PGA Championship. Glory's last shot. Oh, he's no good in the majors. I really didn't like him complaining about the green speed. Didn't like at, him one bit. Oh. And was complaining at the Open Championship about him too fast. Just play. Everybody, yeah. just play. Just go play. Can't all be Firestone. <laughs> <laughs> he wishes they were. He may never lose. Um, but pretty impressive today uh, from Tiger Woods, but just short of the 59. Coming up later this hour, Ole Miss is opening up training camp tomorrow. 
Uh, ten four or nine forty five a.m. start tomorrow morning for the rebels. A lot. Most people call it fall camp. I don't. I call it August camp because I just training I, camp no good. I can't. Oh, training camp's fine. That's I fine. just I just can't think fall right. When even yeah. as nice as it is today, it's still not fall. Parrish Alford's going to join us. Mm-hmm. Talk a little Ole Miss with him. Uh, also uh, next hour we'll have our Friday five at five. Putting you in charge of being the Texas athletics director. And you have to go find a football coach next season. Who's on your short list of five? I mean, you got to feel pretty good that you're going to get them. You have to keep that in mind as well. So, list of five. Who are you going after if you're going to hire at Texas next season? You can text those in at 67129-67129. One, two, nine. Also, uh, Pete Russo will join us coming up next hour as well. Good to have Ron Tillery back from vacation because, uh, well, he, he needs to work. And yesterday and today he was on the Sports Time program. You hear him uh, in the mornings here on Sports 56, 877 FM. You read him in the commercial appeal. And by golly, you see him again on Twitter finally at CA Grizz blog. Ron Tillery is with us. Hello, Ron. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm glad you're finally uh, you're finally back, and you've been kind of busy in the last 48 hours. Well, yeah, I mean, um, it uh, takes a lot of time to catch up, and uh, not only just making contact and reconnecting with people, but also reconditioning your mind, man. You know how that is. <laughs> Getting your head right. <laughs> you know, I'm back in, in body, but I don't know about mind and spirit. <laughs> Well, what what happened while you were gone, uh, Ron? The Grizzlies go get Mike Miller, and the they made a couple of other little moves, I guess. Um, you know, guys that are going to be coming in camp and and going to be fighting for positions on the team and and could earn roster spots. Uh, but Mike Miller certainly the significant signing uh, over the last couple of weeks. What, what what so far this off season now as it continues to shake out? What do you, what do you make of it? Well, you know, I, I think if you're a Grizzly fan, you have reason to be optimistic, and, and I would even say just look cautiously optimistic because, you know, let's let's face it. I mean, they didn't take any steps back. Um, you got to like the fact that the core is still intact and, and that this still very much looks like a contending team. Um, I think where, you know, I may go the other way from the over-exuberant Grizzly fan is that while I like the Mike Miller um, – Signing while I like the the Darrell Arthur for Kufa's trade, you know I look around the NBA and and I see a lot of teams that took huge steps forward and and uh, and so you have to be concerned about that. Uh, I put it in this context, guys. Last year, the Grizzlies started in November as the best team in the NBA, and for the rest of the season they were a top five team in the NBA easily. And now you look at um, the likes of the Clippers. The Thunder, the uh, the Spurs, the Heat, Chicago with their Rose coming back, Brooklyn with what their upgrades have been, Golden State, Houston. Um, you know, you you, you got to be concerned about uh, um, the movements from everybody else, but that's not to say that the Grizzlies haven't uh, maintained themselves as a contender. I'm not I'm not I'm I'm not concerned, Ron. And and, and here's why: I, I'm only concerned about the West, and I don't think anybody passed them in the West. Well, and, and know, to I, keep in I, mind, I mean, last year they were four games shy of the top team in the entire conference. And while I, I think the Clippers, certainly I believe they, they got better, I think on playoff time they still have deficiencies. They made changes. I don't, did they get better? I don't think the Thunder have gotten better this offseason. They may have even gone back a step, but they still have Durant. They still have sure Westbrook. Not bad. You know, so, 58 plus. Yeah, no, I still put them up there. and. And the Spurs are the Spurs. Plus, I think they also they make moves just to kind of keep them where they're at. That's fine, but I, I don't. I mean, I, I think you're still within four or five games of the top team in the Western Conference, and I don't think Houston or Golden State passed you, despite what a lot of people think. Ron, do you think anybody passed them? Well, I, I, I think I think Golden State is going to replace them. Um, I don't think there's any question that the Warriors... Because that Curry job. kid has one good quarter in a game? <laughs> well, I don't think there's any question if you look at what they did in the offseason, that they that they addressed their needs. And while Denver drops out, I think Golden State continues to, to, to rise. I, I think if you talk about the Clippers, 
you got to like their signings. And then when you think about the playoffs, I mean, you know, Doc Rivers has a great track record uh, in the in the postseason, and I think that's where he makes his difference. Um, and, you know, um, again, I, I, I'm not saying what I'm saying to say the Grizzlies take, took a step back. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but, you know, you're still looking at a team that has to find a legitimate backup point guard, strengthen that, that backcourt rotation. Uh, they have not done that yet, although they are trying to do that. Um, I just think as we stand here on, what is it, August the 2nd? I don't know what day it is. I know it's Friday. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, you know, the Grizzlies still have some work to do. They're still a contending team. Um, but, uh, but I, I mean, uh, um, I, I think they extracted every possible win you could get out of this squad in, in a 56 win season last year. And, and, and you look at the West and I don't think you're going to have teams at the top winning 56, 56, 57, 60, 60 like you did a year ago. Was the Clippers move to hire Doc the best move they made? I think so. I mean, because, um, listen, that, that team lacked toughness and they lacked organization. Uh, they had enough talent starting with Chris Paul uh, to win a lot of games. But, you know, Doc Rivers is going to bring some organization there. And he's going to bring a, a, a change in culture and a mentality that uh, lends itself to being a championship contender. Has he, I mean, it's that, it's that simple. Has he already had the conversation with, or is it upcoming, or will it occur at all with Chris Paul of, I'm the coach, you're the point guard, and we have to get along? Well, I, I don't think there's any question about that because, you know, all the pressure's on Chris Paul. Look, he, he's had carte blanche. I mean, if they want peanut butter and jelly sandwiches they in the locker them. room for, for breakfast, they get them. Or homemade lobster, <laughs> they get them. <laughs> you know, uh, so so now they have given you any and everything that you want. It's up to you to go out and produce. And then now you have a coach who has not only the credentials as a top flight coach, but, you know, Doc Rivers was no slouch as a player. Uh, you can't buck Doc Rivers like you did Benito and Negro. No. Uh, Ron, the point guard situation, uh, you wrote a couple of things today. One, uh, Mo Williams, um, where does that stand? Baino Udra, do you think one of them will end up with the team? Um, I, I think so, um, because I think they're really committed to making a serious upgrade uh, at that position. There, there is not a lot of confidence in Tony Roden, and quite frankly, why should there be? Uh, so they're right to be moving in this direction. I think they're right to have all balls in the air because we are on the back half of free agency. The money is drying up. And so Mo Williams can want a multi-year deal all he wants. Bino Odrick could want to make $7 million like he did last year all he wants. But it's going to come a time where you're only going to have so many options. And where the Grizzlies have leverage is, even though they want to do a one-year deal with these guys, they can offer these guys more than the veterans uh, minimum. And, and so that's, that's a little leverage. How's this possible? I, th- I thought all they, they had no money. It's like the, what the Clippers have been doing. Every time they sign a player, I wonder how the heck they're doing it. Well, it's, it's, um, it's situational. I mean, the Grizzlies have their mid-level now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just have chosen not to use it. And, and when you get to this point again in the, in the offseason and free agency, um, it's about leverage. Uh, and now you have the leverage because um, – when I talk about having more than that veterans minimum, which is about 1.2, uh, the Grizzlies can say, well, we'll give you 2 million. And they can do that comfortably without getting into the tax right. and, and, um, and secure a player like this. I mean, these, I mean, I mean, the other side of that is, let's face it now, these guys are around for a reason because this has been the year of the guard. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, guards have been going left and right this off season for a decent months. Right. How quickly uh, do we read a tweet that uh, they're talking to Al Harrington, who was, <laughs> was waived by the Magic today? Nah, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that, that he'll be in play. I mean, I was told here recently that don't waste your time chasing Antoine Jameson. That's not real. Um, I mean, it's possible that the, that the Grizzlies' name will be thrown out right. in an Al Harrington thing. But you're talking about uh, uh, another injured player, you know, risky proposition. Um, they want to play Mike Miller at the three as well as Tayshawn, as well as, um, 
uh, um, Quincy. Quincy, thank you. Thank you. See, see, <laughs> yeah, you've see, been I've been gone. gone. That's fine. I've been gone so long, as well as Quincy. And I can tell you this, one of the, one of the things that's going on behind the scenes as far as it, it relates to rounding out the roster is they're really concentrating on chemistry. They don't want to bring the wrong person in here to disrupt what they think they're building here in terms of their additions and subtractions. So the player ha- has to be able to produce but also fit the culture that they're establishing. Speaking of coaching, uh, you tweeted out earlier, looks like Elston Turner might be the lead assistant for Dave Yeager. Excellent, excellent pick. Yeah. I always thought that Ed Pickney, who was the original front runner, uh, was really risky. And I think what's happening here is that they've realized that even though Dave Yeager is a bright, young, smart uh, prospect as a head coach, he still is a first-time NBA head coach. And you're looking at a guy in Elston Turner who has great experience. He comes from the Rick Adelman tree. And if you follow the league for two minutes, you know how good of a coach Rick Adelman is. I think too often we pigeonhole coaches like Dave Yeager is the defensive guru when the reality is he came in as a great offensive mind in 2007. I look at a guy like Elston Turner as a guy who can relate to players really well, uh, who was in Phoenix uh, as a defensive guy, but has been around Rick Allman for most of his uh, coaching career in the NBA. And so he understands offense and, and, and how to maximize the free-flowing style that Dave Yeager wants to play. So you're talking about really what I'm saying is a well-rounded NBA assistant coach and a guy who, um, who, uh, who knows how to win. And so I, I, I think if they can finalize that, and it looks like they will next week, uh, that's a great choice. Ron Tillery, where are you on the Mike Miller acquisition? or What, what can be the – what, what's the best scenario come May, June of next year, and what's disaster? Well, I mean, it was a no-brainer, for one. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's known Dave Jager before we even knew uh, how to pronounce his name. <laughs> um, he's got a, 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 a past relationship with the organization and a comfort level with the ownership group. So I think the move was about two things. It was about um, trying to help the Grizzlies keep going forward, as a player, but also transitioning into life after uh, his playing days, which he could do seamlessly with his group. Um, from, from a basketball standpoint, um, best case scenario is that it, he stays healthy enough uh, to contribute in a fair amount of games and is around for you in the postseason. Uh, the disaster is, is that he requires back surgery and he's out uh, for a long time and you know, you just only get a few games out of him. I don't know but if I want him cashing in that free golf from Mike Conley. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. But, you know, there's no doubt. I mean, he can shoot. I mean, you know, when I think about Mike Miller, you know, because, you know, I've been here all 12 seasons. I really like the guy. Um, I, I love the deal that Jerry did to move Drew Gooden to get him. Uh, he's a pro's pro. Um you know, he was the sixth man of the year in Memphis. Uh, he never had good playoff performances in Memphis. That's what I remember. But now I see a Mike Miller who has developed and grown into a big-time performer when it counts. So, I mean, when, you, when you're talking about the Grizzlies and their progression and just, you know, uh, they're, them keeping the window open to contend, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a guy – who can knock down shot under pressure. Mm-hmm. And I think Mike developed into that guy. The fans want him to be big shot Bob. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know what? To your point, Stat, your earlier point, I think there's a danger in expecting too much from him. I do too. He, he is an older player. He does have the back injury. You know what? I remember when he was here before he got traded, he was pressing the Grizzlies for a contract extension, and they wouldn't do it, and they wouldn't do it because of the back. And, and here we are with that same issue ran his ugly head. He feels good. Of course he does. It's the off season. And he, <laughs> he didn't play a whole lot, you know, during the regular season. Right. Uh, but if they can figure out a way to manage uh, his minutes, you know, not unlike Tony Allen, by the way, and, and keep him fresh, um, uh, it's a win-win. I, I, I think, I, you know, I think in the end he's going to give you enough to justify it. And uh, the beauty of it is he wants to be here. People want him here. Um, and and he still 
is uh, young enough and, and uh, proficient enough to produce. You're right about he feels good because it's the off season. You know, it'll be fun to know. Of course, Rob won't let us know when on one of those road trips, late night flights from Washington <laughs> to Toronto, when he sleeps in the floor of the plane, he'll tell us next. <laughs> and it summer, might be back by us. He always <laughs> sits back by the media people and takes up all our. It just basically disturbs us. Then Rob, the Rob will tell us <laughs> next summer. Oh, I knew he was out for that road trip. He slept on <laughs> the floor on every yeah. flight. Yeah. I won't. I won't. I won't tell you about it. But uh, Ron, uh, when when camp opens and they go to Nashville, will Tony Roten be with the team? Uh, it's possible. I'd be a little surprised because I think they want to get off of Tony Roten. Um, you know, listen. It's not to say that this kid couldn't ever be a good player in the league. He was a three-year guy before he even stepped on the court. Well, that's yeah, what we believed. Yeah, and but the reality is they didn't draft him. This new now he's game. four years. <laughs> yeah, I mean they didn't draft him, and and they have a window, and um, you know it's it's, it's, it's you gotta look at it like this. I mean it doesn't say anything you know dramatic against Tony Roten, but how about moving Gravis Vasquez to to get a guy that could that could help you now at at a meet in Quincy Pondexter. Uh, so, I mean, if they feel like they can upgrade the backup point uh, point guard position now, and it takes moving him to do it, um, they're absolutely open to that. You mentioned and, uh, you mentioned a sign and trade potentially with Mo Williams. Is that a potential deal that the Grizzlies could do with Mo Williams? You know, I, I just you know put that out there because I think people need to remember Utah has his rights, and if he's looking for a multi year deal, that would be one of the best ways he could get it. Um, you know, it's hard to forecast because these things are fluid, how likely that is than not. But I, I do believe the Grizzlies are more interested in a one-year deal with one of these guys than a multi-year deal. Do you believe at all the report yesterday, I believe it was Chad Ford, if I'm not mistaken, about Zebo being, well, explored, thrown out there, oh, absolutely. dangled? Absolutely. I mean, uh if people don't believe that they were shopping Zach Randolph at the same time that they were shopping Rudy Gay, they're fooling themselves. Uh, that's always going to be open for a discussion. Even uh, with that, that, even with that small window. Yeah, because um, you know it's been very clear from the early stages that they see the 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 here and now of this franchise with Mike Conley and and Mark Gasol. Um, well, that's not well, to say well, that Zach. He, I'm sorry, Ron. Go ahead. No, I'm saying that's not to say that Zach is worthless, but he's clearly on the on the, the decline in certain areas, and he makes a lot of money. And um, I think they'll always be open to that. Now, I think it's you know, to your question about Roten being here, I think it's more likely than not that Zach starts the season here. But don't be stunned by any stretch if he's not here at the trade deadline. What does he bring you in a deal? What 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 do you think the max for Zach Randolph would be? Oh, that's a good question, Stats. You know, um, I think it all depends on what the Grizzlies want out of it. I mean, because let's for context, let's go back to the Powell the Fall trade. You could have fetched tons for Powell. I don't care what anybody said, but that's not what the Grizzlies wanted. They wanted his money, mm -hmm. so they traded him for flexibility. You know, um, and surely they could accomplish that, the Grizzlies, whether it be picks and expiring contracts, because the the team that receives that, which view him as a player that could put them over the top as an elite rebounder, and somebody that's coming off the book. You know, so so it's it's hard to answer that question because it, it, it all depends on what. Both parties are trying to accomplish. And again, I'll take you back to the pile of foul trade. I mean, you know, everybody said they got nothing for him. They didn't want anything for him. And then you had to judge that trade by what they did with the flexibility they created by trade. If that trade is made on the day it's made, will they get more than it was perceived for Powell and more than for Rudy Gay? Um, I think I think what you do with Zach is what you did with Powell. I do not like the Rudy Gay trade on August 2nd, no more than I liked it on January the 30th or whatever day it was. Mm -hmm. um, you had a 26-year-old swing man with um, some glaring needs, particularly shooting. 
Um, and I think you could have satisfied that with Rudy Gay. Uh, look, look at what happened this summer. The Clippers sent, sent out Eric Bledsoe in a three-team deal and got back J.J. Redick and, and Jared Dudley, two rotation players. That's going to help them this year. Um, so I just look at those two things, you know, really differently. I, I, I think I think if, if they do decide to move back, and there's really no indication that they're seriously shopping them. I'm just saying I think they'll be open to it. But I don't think they'll want anything. I think they'll want flexibility, the flexibility of his salary. Ron Tillery, welcome back. Thank you, sir. It's good to good have to you. Be back. Yeah. But, I, but I'll yeah. still say get some rest because we can't ever get enough. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I, I got some rest because I haven't been on Twitter. <laughs> that's, 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 that's rest enough. Absolutely. <laughs> that's a respect. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right. Good to talk to you guys again. Thank you, Ron. All right. Ron, Ron, Ron Tiller is joining us. Uh, again, Elston Turner, potentially uh, assistant coach. And um, Baino Udra, Mo Williams, who knows? Elston Turner, great player at Ole Miss mm -hmm. with Sean Tui. And his son was a good player at Washington. So you going to Jim's place tonight? I am after uh, after after the show for dinner. Oh, a drink maybe. They have that. Maybe two, but uh, but that's it. Are you going to try to get a Martini Monday deal on Friday? I'm not, but I would imagine that my my guest will. Are you going to try the, to the get lovely them, the, the, the lovely <laughs> wife to, tends you, to like those? Will you try to get them to extend the happy hours that run three to six Monday through Friday? I always do. <laughs> maybe ten tonight. Magic words, Cleveland Indians and. That's it with the win streak. That might get the happy hour. Can you guys put the Indians game on in here? <laughs> It'll be on. I think that'll work. Jim's Place, Poplar and Perkins, famous for their steaks, famous for their seafood and Greek specialties. Crab cakes, man. That reflect the owner's heritage. Father and son owners, Costa and Bill Terrace, they've been in business, owned and operated by the Terrace family since 1921, serving Memphis and Mid-Southerners since then. On the eve of football season, in the middle of baseball season for a long, long time now. Happy hour, every day, 3 to 6, 450 well drinks, $3 domestics. Monday nights, Martini Monday, 4 bucks on Monday night. And, yes, that will be during Monday night football. Tuesday night, half price house wine, and, of course, they cater now. They bring it to you, $11 a person for chicken kebabs, $12 a person for steak kebabs. That's all the fixings, rice, vegetable of the day, house salad, and the cookies. We love our history and our tradition in sports, and we love our fun places to go and friends to be with, and they certainly do that very well at Poplar and Perkins at Jim's Place. Visit their website, jimsplacememphis.com, or give them a call. 901-766-2030 for a reservation or for the catering needs. 766-2030, serving great food and fond memories since 1921. And go by there tonight. Yeah. Go up and say, hey, where are the crazy shoes? <laughs> go up and say, aren't you Mrs. Fisher? <laughs> that might impress the table a little more. <laughs> are you going to try to high some pins? I'm not, they got great pen. pens there. Yeah, they do. Not to not to endorse any of that, but <laughs> yeah, I'll be I'll be paying. Let's take it out of the bottom I'll be, line. I'll be paying with a card for sure tonight. <laughs> and uh, that uh, little envelope is going to come back a little light. Not on the tip. Oh gosh, no, not after the conversation we had this this week. No, tip will be fine. Should they just might not have a pen? <laughs> Get it back. I tell you, I say you tip everybody. <laughs> Put everybody in the Hall of Fame. Tip everybody. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll come back. We're going to talk a little Ole Miss. They open camp tomorrow. Parrish Alford will join us when we return here on Fish and Stats. Keep it right here at Sports 56, 87.7 FM. The Press Box with Keith Parker and Elliot Wender. 1 to 2, Monday through Friday on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. I'm with John Burgess of the world-famous Rendezvous Restaurant talking about just a few of their famous firsts. Brett, the Rendezvous has always been a restaurant of firsts. We're the first restaurant to serve barbecued ribs. As a matter of fact, the ribs that we use and most everyone else uses used to be a scrap product. My dad's the one that figured out what to do with them. We're the first restaurant to serve a cheese and sausage plate. We actually served that before we served ribs, and I still believe that our cheese and sausage plate is the best in the city. We're the first restaurant to serve lamb ribs. But most recently, the first restaurant to serve nachos, barbecued beef brisket, chopped chicken, 
chicken sandwich, the first barbecue restaurant to serve wine, and we're the largest seller of locally brewed Ghost River beer than anyone. We are aware and respectful of our past at the Rendezvous, but look forward to the future, as depicted by our vegetarian red beans and rice, by our Project Green Fork certification for recycling, and we continue to pay health care coverage to all of our employees. We take our legacy seriously, but we want to continue to be a relevant, active business in the Memphis community that has always been so kind to us. There's only one rendezvous, and it's in the alley in downtown Memphis. Tunica National's legendary three-person scramble is underway. Every Thursday at 5.30, $30 gets you nine holes with a cart, free dinner buffet, and a chance to qualify for this year's Tournament of Champions sponsored by the Gold Strike Casino. Each week, all winning teams and all flights qualify, so if you win the second or third flight, your team qualifies for the TOC and the after party at the Gold Strike Casino. Now listen up. This year, both par threes will have a closest to the pin contest, and here's how it works. One lucky winner will win a fantastic prize from Tunica National. The other lucky winner will get a ticket put into an end of the year drawing for a chance to win one of five prizes from a collection of gifts valued at $2,500. So call Tunica National at 866-833-6331. That's 866 off one anytime before 530 every Thursday to get your team entered. So for 30 bucks, you get golf, free dinner, a chance to win great prizes, and each winning team from every flight qualifies for the TOC. Plus the after party at the Gold Strike Casino. Call 866 off one and get your team entered today. Tunica National's three-person scramble is going on right now. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't become paralyzed by fear. Take action now. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help. Our team of experienced tax attorneys can get you protected. Stop collection and negotiate a permanent settlement with the IRS and state, potentially saving you thousands of dollars. At U.S. Tax Shield, our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. No games and no tricky upsells. That's why we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Put an end to your torment. Get protected. Get the shield. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 800-299-1855. That's 800-299-1855. 800-299-1855. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It's 4.30. I'm Bash. The second round of the Bridgestone Invitational over at Firestone Country Club is underway. Tiger Woods is looking to be the Tiger of old. Woods opened his round today with birdie, eagle, birdie, en route to a 30 on the front nine. He finished today with tying his own course record at 9 under, firing a 61 for the round. Tiger sits at 13 under for the tournament, obviously in the lead. Keegan Bradley and Chris Wood are tied for second at 6 under, seven strokes back to Tiger. As far as the suspensions related to the Biogenesis case are concerned at Major League Baseball, CBS Sports is reporting that the players' deadline to accept their suspension appears to be Sunday. Announcements are likely to follow on Monday. You know, you hear something different about A-Rod just about every hour, and this one comes from ESPN, say that he will fight any suspension no matter what all the way to the end. He wants to play as soon as possible. As a result of the Biogenesis case, Ryan Braun's lost yet another sponsor. Nike has ended any relationship with Braun, just adding to the list of deals he's losing as well. There's one day game going on right now in the big leagues. The Dodgers and Cubs are at it. Dodgers lead that one 3-1. to one. They're in the top of the fourth. A couple of quick NBA notes. No news on the Mo Williams front. To Ron Tillery, the commercial appeal reported earlier that the veteran free agent guard is close to choosing his next NBA team. Grizzlies are in the running for the services, along with Utah, Miami, San Antonio, and New York. Greg Oden also plans to make his final decision on where he'll end up today as well. Sports reports brought to you by Amerigo. Visit Amerigo for casual, energetic, affordable Italian dining, offering fresh Italian cuisine. Open daily for lunch and dinner at 1239 Ridgeway Road. Make your reservations online at Americo.net or call 761-4000. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Coming up at 5 o'clock, we will have our Friday 5 at 5. You are the athletics director at Texas, who... Is on your short list of coaches if Mac Brown were to be gone. Who's on your short list? Who's on your list of five? That'll be our Friday five and five. You can text yours in at six seven one two nine six seven one two nine. And we're getting a lot like that first one on top. Not a chance. Not a chance. In fact, when I texted you the deal today, I said, "Don't even have him on there. It's not worth talking about." Yeah, that'd be Saint Nick. You wouldn't and, let you wouldn't let me put him on there. And he, he's not a mercenary. But I didn't put him on there. But I did 
list him as, under the kick in the tires section of my you, top five. You have to get a no from him? I got, yeah, I got to call him first. Well, I can give you a no. All right, well, then I'll move on to my okay. five. But I'm, but I'm calling just to see, just to see what he thinks. All right, Alabama open camp today. Uh, by the way, tomorrow Ole Miss will uh, open camp. They uh, had their media day today, and uh, joining us now to talk a little Ole Miss football from the Daily Journal, Parrish Alford is with us. Hello, Parrish. How are you? Hey guys, I'm fine. How are y'all? We're, well, we're doing Parrish. well. How did uh, how things go today? Everybody excited? Uh, you got to talk to all the new freshmen, didn't you? Oh, you know it, but you know that, that's not really unusual. A freshman <laughs> didn't speak last year, but right. you know I, I'm thinking this, this is a little bit, uh, it's a little different. This is the best class they've ever signed. A lot of expectations for this group, and you know I'm thinking, uh, you know, you spent the off season publicizing how good this group is. You know, let them talk a little bit, but uh, but that that wasn't what happened, and that wasn't surprising. So yeah. freshman didn't speak, but uh, a lot of questions about the freshman. And, all the answers were positive, and I guess uh, the thing that that uh, struck me a little bit, and, and it wasn't a surprise to hear it necessarily, but uh, the, the older players, the current teammates, uh, these guys have come with the best. You know, I didn't hear it uh, Sounds like it's a group that uh, doesn't feel like they can't learn anything. Mm-hmm. Paris, did you have more questions? To Denzel Kim DJ about his brother Robert, or more <laughs> questions about Bo Wallace Wallace's shoulder. Tell you what, uh, Denzel, you know, he was asked a lot about uh, Robert last year in the recruiting process, and it was like right off the bat this year. The time I, I made it over to uh, Denzel's area, a lot of questions about Robert, a lot of uh, still a lot of interest there, and you know, and, and it was Denzel talking about Robert in terms of that coachable. Attitude. I, I think that's going to be important. You know, anytime you bring a, anytime you bring a newcomer into your program, there's a certain amount of risk. It doesn't matter how good he was at the previous level. There is still a certain amount of acclimation that goes on to new surroundings. And you know, and Denzel was talking about Robert said he comes in and feels like he can learn and you know and, and take things from the coaching staff and and older players. And, and going back to SEC media days, Mike Mary said the same thing. You know, sure you had Hugh Freeze at the podium talking about reeling in expectations. Then you had Mike Mary comparing Robert Kimdichie to Jadevion Clowney. So a lot of expectations for this group. Absolutely. And then you look at the offensive uh, firepower with Bo coming back and Jeff Scott and the, the receivers uh, led by Dante Moncrief. I mean, uh, this team showed the ability to, well, score uh, last year, and uh, I would imagine they're expecting even bigger things despite not having a, a tight end parish. Right. And, you know, Evan Ingram, in terms of tight end, was uh, a freshman that uh, that Freeze called out early, so he really wants to get him to a level where he can, can help and contribute. And they are thin at that position, and they've moved a, you know, a, a program veteran there and, and Nick Parker and you know, that, that's going to be interesting, but you know, I think Freeze is a guy who you know, he can overcome that uh, in terms of sets and and the different things he'll do with some personnel. Uh, you know, being thin at tight end and having a question mark there is a lot different than being uh, thin at quarterback and having question marks there uh, as this team was a year ago. So you, you're right; they they return a lot of proven uh, players, experienced players. A lot of success on offense for these guys last year. They're going to come in pretty confident, but uh, you know it's it's a difficult schedule for this group. You know they don't have Central Arkansas and, and UTEP right off the bat to gain a little confidence with. You know they go straight into the Vanderbilt game, and you know, that's that's a huge opener. If they lose that game, they could be one and three uh, after trips to Texas and, and Tuscaloosa. You know going to an Auburn team that that I think will be much improved. Yeah, and hadn't won at Auburn since Eli Manning was the quarterback his senior year. That's the thing about the – you look at the road trips, uh, Parrish. Uh, Vanderbilt opening night and one in one in five the last six against Vanderbilt, I think. Maybe even – is it one in five or one in six, Parrish? Uh, that sounds right. I know right. they've lost. They haven't won since 2009. You know, and, you know, Brett, for years I would, I would hear these old Miss guys say, Vanderbilt always plays us tough. Well, for years that's what it was. <laughs> but – but that's not what it is now. No, I mean, now, they really need to. It's been right, a loss. Go ahead. 
And, and so you have yeah, that. You have the road trip to Auburn. Had one with since a guy named named Eli Manning. You got a road trip to Tuscaloosa. You've only won once there ever, and that was in 1988. And you you got to go to uh, Austin. Only beat Texas once ever anywhere. I don't think ever they've ever played at Austin and got hammered last year by them. And you got to go for the Egg Bowl in, in Starkville, and you haven't won there since a guy named Eli Manning was quarterback. So uh, the, the schedule is very sobering. So, yeah, the bottom line is this team could be better than last year and, and could have about the same record. Now, they need not only to be a good team early, they need to be a good road team, and those are different things. You know, they, you know, these freshmen are going to come in and contribute in different ways. They're going to be expected to play early. They're going to go into environments that are not friendly to them right off the bat. They're going to have to produce in those environments. You know, and, and guys who are coming off some off-season injuries, uh, so they're going to have to be in condition uh, mentally and physically to you know handle that uh, life on the road earlier than last year. They don't have those home games. Like last year, you had the, had the home games, uh, and, and then your first road game was Tulane. You know, so uh, it, it was you, you were able to kind of ease into the season after Texas, and they learned a lot in that Texas game. But uh, sure that's is. not how this schedule sets up for them. Parrish offered our guest talking the Ole Miss Rebels. He's on the beat for the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal in Tupelo on all things Ole Miss and the SEC and in this part of the world parish who uh, did you get to visit with paul jackson and if you did if you did who are if you learned from it, someone who was the summertime champion who was the workout king you know i did not get to visit with paul jackson and and, and that's a little tidbit that escaped me you know I, i'm so used to every coach every year uh praising the strength and conditioning coach, and, <laughs> and, uh, and every team, every August is bigger, stronger, faster. So that uh, that that little that little bit just uh, just just escaped me. <laughs> and and while that we we joke about that, and we joke about that a lot, it it is important for this team. Uh, and I I assume Hugh Freeze has addressed it at some point about they need to be a better fourth quarter team too. Well, they, they do, and, and you know, and I know that uh, Paul Jackson worked hard with this group, and I don't think conditioning is going to be a problem with them. And in fact, you know, I was speaking with uh, a Vanderbilt player at, at media days, and, and gosh, his name escapes me right now, but you know, I was talking to him about last year's Ole Miss game and how close that was, and then it finally turned Vanderbilt's way there, really with a questionable spot there at the end. The Ole Miss could have run out the clock there and won that game, but uh, bottom line is, uh, you know, everybody everybody sees that differently. And uh, and his response on that was, we were just better conditioned. You know, we were better conditioned, and we outlasted Ole Miss last year. And uh, I thought, well, that's that's a good mistake. And I put that out on Twitter, and Paul Jackson responded to that, and then it traveled a little ways. And you know, so uh, I think uh, Paul Jackson does a good job with this team. I think they're going to be in shape, and they're going to be conditioned. And you know. We'll just uh, we'll see what it's like in the fourth quarter. I think part of uh, the problem late in games last year was just the fact that they didn't have the quality depth that Freeze feels like they need to have to compete in the SEC, and they're still not there. One class doesn't do that, but it's a big step in the right direction, and that's why so many of these young guys are going to play early. Parrish, uh, going into this camp, what what do you feel like the the biggest questions are uh, that they need to address uh, before the season does get underway? I think the biggest thing is you need to find out who these freshmen are, and it mm -hmm. might not be Robert Kimbiji off the bat. You know, I, a lot of it depends on time and, and circumstance. You have two seniors coming back at, at end. You know, if, if Robert Kimbiji is the next to Devion Clowney, then sure he's going to get in there right away, and, and he's going to, to make some waves, but we'll see. Uh, you know, I know they have a need in the secondary, and a name that kept uh, coming around today in terms of uh, depth at cornerback was Bobby Hill, the freshman out of Georgia. He'll get an opportunity because Nick Brazel's no longer around. They've got uh, two guys at cornerback, not a lot of depth behind them, and uh, one of those guys, Charles Sawyer, it's not a given. He's going to be ready to go in the Vanderbilt game. If he, if he keeps to his rehab schedule, he should be ready for contact, he said, uh, around game week. So not a lot uh, going into that Vanderbilt game. So you know, that's, that's a player there who could have an opportunity early in Bobby Hill. I think another guy to keep an eye on because they're trying to 
move some people around and build some depth in that secondary is, is going to be Derek Jones, a freshman uh, signed as a wide receiver out of Eufora. If you go back to signing day, you remember that uh, Freeze talked about this guy in terms of his athleticism and, and talked then about how he could probably help this team in different positions. Like he talked as much about Derek Jones, the basketball player on that day, as he did the football player. Well, Derek Jones has been moved to safety. You know, opportunity there to get on the field early as they try to build some depth. So, you know, the guys who really, you know, stepped in from this class and, and contribute early might not be the guys that you read the most about in the recruiting coverage. You know, and here's something else. As you, as you talk about depth and needing to build depth on this team, you know, really I think it's special teams as much as anything else. I mean, you, you know, look at Ole Miss the last two games last year. They gave up special teams touchdowns in the last two games, one against LSU that cost them, and then one against Mississippi State that they were able to absorb it. And that, that goes back to uh, depth right there. And, and that's going to be, I think, the first place that many of these freshmen need to come in and help and just you know, give the starters a blow there. With the freshman talk, any of the heralded freshman offensive linemen, do you see any scenario they're playing at Vanderbilt on opening night? You know, I know that they're going to play at some point. I think, you know, the death of Park Stevens here, Park Stevens, you know, he could have figured into that into that depth as well. And, uh, you know, now he's not around. These freshmen all of a sudden have to grow up a little faster. And this bunch only played six offensive linemen last year. You can't go through a whole season like that again. Yeah. I mean, they were extremely fortunate to do that last year. You know, will they, will they play in the first game? Uh, I think that would not be the goal. <laughs> I think they'll try to play those six. They'll try to play those six as much as they can. And uh, you know, maybe if there's a situation that uh, you know one or two of these guys get in there uh, and get some experience against Vanderbilt, and then a little bit more against Southeast Missouri, maybe that would be uh, uh, what they would try to do. But I think what you're going to see along the line is some guys in some different positions. I think you're going to see uh, Matt Luke move some guys around, whether that's uh, uh, incoming freshmen who uh, who are going to start out at a different position on the college level, maybe move inside at guard, or maybe a, a Pierce Burton at right tackle move around a little bit. But uh, I think you're going to see uh, Matt Luke uh, do a little bit of mixing and matching. Free says he'd like to play eight or nine offensive line. You know, and he's going to have to find those guys and develop them because uh, they they weren't comfortable with the guys they had to play that many last year. The biggest difference between media day. 2013 and Hugh Freeze first media day a year ago in 2012. Oh, it, it's it's like they're light years ahead. I mean, Freeze in his opening statement said he felt like they were a little bit ahead, and you know, and, and I know he's trying to, to rein in expectations, and he should. But uh, the, the thought process around this team right now, just the attitude of being beaten down so much at the end of 2011. You go back to those last three games oh, man. Uh, after yeah, after Houston Nuts uh, uh, firing had been announced, you know, just how they were just obliterated in, in three games there. And, and then, you know, coming into uh, camp in 2012, you know, Dave Womack, the defensive coordinator, coming out of uh, spring last year, told us he felt like he had about uh, four or five SEC players. Not, not four or five all SEC players, you know, but Four or five guys that he thought could contribute in the SEC. I mean, that, that's just not that's just not where this program is right now. They made great progress in a year, and uh, they they believe that they're going to continue to make progress. The Louisiana Tech game was the worst thing I've ever laid eyes on, football wise. <laughs> when you had a team that would not tackle, oh, you can't. Right. Put, I mean, it, it was worse than any Pro Bowl. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, and, and it was the same thing against the LSU and, and uh, Mississippi State. It was just, you know, uh, it was they were clearly in mail it in mode at that point. And, you know, and, and so you go from that to, uh, to camp in 2012 and, you know, just a lot of unknowns. I mean, uh, at this point a year ago, Hugh Freeze had done an excellent job of saying the right things and winning the press conference. You know, he had done that. But, uh, no, you know, it's, that's a long way from getting things done on the field. And gradually it came around, and, and they were shell shocked against Texas. If you could take this Ole Miss team and play it against the Texas team that was kind of uh, struggling a little bit at the end of last year, 
and that would have been a much closer game. You know, if you could have that Texas game in Oxford this year, the Ole Miss would have a much better chance, and you know, and maybe they go with Austin and surprise uh, surprise the Longhorns over there. I think uh, you know that's that's not the outside the realm of possibility, but uh, that, that's going to be a difficult place to win. Parrish, before we let you go, Bo Wallace, uh, his shoulder, and uh, also C.J. Johnson, uh, his leg, both fine, good to go? Uh, C.J. Johnson's going to be ready. He's limited in practice right now, but he's coming along. He's on schedule. Uh, Bo Wallace's shoulder, uh, what I'm told is the shoulder is better than it was. It is healed. Everything is all there. The shoulder's good, and right now it's about regaining strength. It's about just getting back into playing shape and throwing and throwing and throwing and getting stronger and, and, and getting the mechanics back there. It's all about uh, you know, recapturing those things and not so much about the shoulder now. Parrish, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for the update. We appreciate it. I'm Thank sure you, we'll Parrish. be speaking again real soon. All right, guys. Y'all have a good day. Thanks, man. Thank you. Parrish Alford uh, joining us. See, you can uh, follow uh, Parrish on the Twitter, and he is a uh, terrific follow for Ole Miss, and it's uh, very simply at Parrish Alford. Uh, two R's there in Parrish, one in Alford uh, with the Daily Journal. And uh, does a great job, and we thank him for joining us. And we got afternoon. a caller that said that D.T. Shackelford was the workout beast of the summer, and that hmm. does not surprise me. <laughs> Absolutely. Take a break. We'll come back. We'll wrap up this hour. Fish and Stats, Sports 56, 87.7 FM. Want to know what your favorite Sports 56 show is planned? Check out the daily schedule at sports56whbq.com. Hi, folks. Rob Walker, Infinity of Memphis, with great news for anyone looking for a local, late model, low mileage, one-owner Infinity vehicle. Last month, Infinity offered their lease customers the opportunity to come out of their lease early. As long as the customer agrees, purchase another new infinity it was a huge success and it was a great deal for those customers it can be a great deal for you too because we've got a lot of like new infinity vehicles standing tall shining like diamonds and looking for a new place to call home they're still under factory warranty and come with our exclusive free lifetime powertrain warranty think about it if someone has an infinity and they're offered the opportunity to get another one and they do don't you think that they were really satisfied? It's a great choice. You bet they did. Do yourself a favor. Go to infinityofmemphis.com and browse our used inventory. Infinity of Memphis, Germantown Road, one mile north of I-40. You know what's tougher than old boots? New boots from Cowboy Corner Boots and Jeans. They've got work boots that'll comfortably take your feet through the harshest conditions. A muddy construction site littered with nails. A rocky pasture digging fence post holes. Or middle of a thunderstorm no matter the work you do cowboy corner has the perfect work boot for you they'll take the time to show you all the brands and types of boots that'll fit your feet because if you don't have the right fit and a durable tough boot why well, that's like wearing flip-flops to pour concrete or wearing sandals in the pasture so protect your feet keep them dry keep them comfy bring them in for a fitting at cowboy corner boots and jeans they know their stuff and they know work boots. Perfect fit of the finest boots. Cowboy Corner Boots and Jeans. Your family owned store that's been bringing you quality boots and service for 56 years on Goodman Road in South Haven. All right, guys, time to make some decisions that will affect your entire football season. Are you going to fall for the game of the week or the year or the decade from somebody who lies about their 80% win rate, starts off talking a lot of smack, but disappears about two-thirds of the way through the Someone who promises a whole lot of free picks and then starts their high-pressure sales routine. Somebody who doesn't even use their real name. How about going with somebody you know and trust, the Rain Man and All-Star Sports? Our first 15 special is underway. The first 15 customers who sign up get season football, college and pro, and season basketball, college and pro, for $1,500 total cost and you get every play we make no exceptions 10 star plays included money updates will be texted to our season customers call us at 461-4600 or check out the specials at therainman.com our 36th football season is coming up we want you to be part of it 
XMC, your authorized Xerox sales agent, can help you manage documents with the flexibility of collaboration you want and the level of security you need. Xerox's electronic document management system allows you to share, collaborate, review, approve, and publish on the web, all with a user-friendly interface and multiple levels of security. When coupled with XMC's scan-enabled multifunction devices, electronic document management provides a complete end-to-end -end management solution. To learn more about electronic document management, visit xmcinc.com. Call 737-8910. That's 737-8910. Hey, I'm Oz. And I'm Jeremiah. What did you do to my house, man? We've been pranking people our whole lives. Where's the baby? Whose truck is that? Now we're turning it into a business. Gunpowder, some gasoline in this and he hits it, it's going to go. We take your ideas, our redneck, ultimate prank. Oh, If you won't pay back, you need us. <laughs> Hillbillies for hire. All new episodes, Sunday at 8, 7 central on CMT. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Wrapping up this hour, Fish and Stats. Next hour, we will have our sleep cheap big number of the day. we got some headlines to get to. Also, we will have our Friday 5 at 5. You're the athletics director at Texas. And you, you need a short list for a football coach that you're going to hire once Mac Brown's done, which, you know, could be after this year, could be in two years, maybe three, whatever. But uh, you need that short list. You need it ready to go for whenever that day comes. Who are your five that you're going to start Friday 5 at 5 today? You can text those to 67129, 67129. Also, uh, Pete Roussel will join us coming up next hour as he does – each and every Friday, now that it's football season. Uh, we've been talking about training camp getting underway and a couple of other camps starting uh, this weekend. South Carolina, they get underway 6-15 tonight. 6-15 tonight. And I told you Spurrier couldn't be on that list because he's not taking anything new. No. He's trying to win it all there, and that would be the cherry on top <laughs> of that remarkable career. Already Florida's all-time winningest coach. Already South Carolina's all-time Winningest coach joins the Bear. He's the only other coach to own the most wins at two SEC schools. He's got two quarterbacks that he's probably going to use. Connor Shaw back from offseason foot surgery and uh, Dylan Thompson. And he'll probably use them both. Connor Shaw being the most underrated player maybe in the conference. I've said a couple of times, whatever, top four, Mount Rushmore, whatever you want to call it. He's in it for the history of the SEC. Connor Shaw. No. Oh, his head coach. Spurrier. Okay. I mean, whatever order, Coach Bryant, Coach Spurrier, Herschel Walker. Mike Slive. The Mannings as a grouping. Slive. General Nealon. Slive. Mm, top 10, but I think closer to 10 than to 5. Being like, of, uh, like at the track of Kramer, Slive. <laughs> Do like a. 5A, 5B. And just be so glad that that dolt Harvey Schiller wanted to go do wrestling with Ted Turner. <laughs> Woo, you talking about one of the most arrogant humans that ever walked. Carolina's backfield, they got Mike Davis. How'd that work out for you doing the wrestling? <laughs> Mike Davis coming back. Also freshman David Williams. David Williams, keep an eye out for him. Tennessee, they're underway. They got underway a month ago. And they left the spring without a quarterback, Justin Worley, Nathan Peterman, battling it out. They're just glad a guy named Dooley's not there. You got that right. They got to replace 2,900 yards receiving, 26 touchdowns receiving from last year. Pig Howard's back, though. He's the only pass catcher who returns with double-digit catches. He had a whopping 10. Was that? Did it really happen how good they looked opening night against NC State? How about that? Game day was in Knoxville for Florida. And they had them on the ropes there for a while. Balls look to avoid their fourth straight losing season. We'll be back. Final hour, fish and stats after this timeout. Sports 56, 87.7 FM. And Ryan Elder's roofing. 
Roofing Solutions. I'm Brian Elder, builder of the roof on the 2013 St. Jude Dream Home. And now I'm proud to announce builder of the roofs of all six houses in this year's Vesta Home Show. Call me, 867-0303. Let me climb on your roof. My team of expert craftsmen will provide you with options from an inexpensive repair with a full warranty to a complete new roof system with a lifetime warranty. We are among the few certified builders of standing seam metal roofs, guaranteed to outlive your grandkids and more affordable than you might think. Call me, 867-030. Measure your roof from outer space and give you an estimate right over the phone. Financing available. A beautiful metal roof will be the envy of the neighborhood. 867-0303 or brianelderroofing.com. Call 867-0303. Brian Elders Roofing Solutions. Hi, this is Glenda Hastings. This year, Napa Cafe is celebrating our 15th anniversary. We have many wonderful and delicious... 15 years of local, independent loyalty. Napa Cafe, 5101 Sanderlin between the Malco Paradiso and the Racket Club. Did you get Abe Lincoln's Snapchat? It totally emancipated my thinking. Yeah, people didn't realize that he wasn't just a progressive leader. He was also a humorist. And that Spotify playlist from Brahms put me to sleep. Marie Antoinette keeps posting pics of cake, hoping people will like her. I totes commented, hashtag abolish monarchy, hashtag guillotine. What a drama queen. Alex Bell keeps tweeting at me. Just because he invented the phone doesn't mean he can keep blowing up mine. Smartphones are like tutors that work 24-7. So send your student back to school with a smartphone from Sprint. Buy one Samsung Galaxy S4 for $199.99 or a Galaxy S3 for $99.99 and get the same model free after $50 mail-in rebate. Make the most of your new phones with unlimited data and 4G LTE, all while on the Sprint network. Visit a Sprint store or Sprint.com. Offer ends a 1513 rebate via reward card. Coverage and offer not everywhere or on all plans. Subject to two-year agreement, credit, activation, and early termination fee. Excludes taxes, network use, rules, and restrictions apply. See store for details. Hey, I'm off. And I'm Jeremiah. What did you do to my house, man? We've been pranking people our whole lives. Where's the baby? Whose poop is that? Now we're turning it into a business. Gunpowder, some gasoline in this and he hits it, it's gonna go. We take your ideas, our redneck know-how, and make the ultimate prank. Oh, if you won't pay back, you need us. <laughs> Hillbillies for Hire. All new episodes, Sunday at 8, 7 central on CMT. Your home for the Ole Miss Rebels. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis and 87.7 FM WPGFLP Memphis. A Flynn Broadcasting Station. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It's 5 o'clock. I'm Bash. The second round of the Bridgestone Invitational over at Firestone Country Club is pretty much wrapped up at this point. Tiger Woods looked like it looked like the Tiger of old earlier. Woods opened his round today with birdie, eagle, birdie, and route to a 30 on the front nine. Finished today with tying his own course record at 9-under for, for, for the round, firing a 61. Tiger's 13-under for the tournament. Keegan Bradley and Chris Wood are tied for second at 6-under, seven strokes back of the lead. As far as the suspensions are related in the biogenesis case in Major League Baseball, CBS Sports is reporting the players' deadline to accept their suspensions appears to be on Sunday, and announcements are likely to follow on Monday. As far as Alex Rodriguez is concerned, it seems to be new news every hour. The latest on Alex Rodriguez says that he will fight any type of suspension and wants to play as soon as possible. Interesting there. Not sure if he'll be able to. As a result of the biogenesis scandal, Ryan Braun's lost to yet another sponsor. Nike has cut all ties with Ryan Braun, ending that relationship there. There's one day game going on in the big leagues today. The Dodgers are in Chicago taking on the Cubs. That score is 5-2 to two with the Dodgers winning. That one's headed to the fifth inning. A couple of NBA notes as well. Nothing new on the Mo Williams front. The Grizzlies are still a finalist for the, for the shooting guard. So, so along with the Utah Jazz, Miami Heat, San Antonio Spurs, and the New York Knicks, Greg Oden still plans on making his decision. No news on that front either. Sports reports brought to you by the Shot Nurse. Get your game back with testosterone replacement therapy from the Shot Nurse. It's the convenient, affordable way to revitalize your life. Check it out at shotnurse.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats. Presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Final hour. Did I ever get my not top story in? No. Let's do that right now. Not top story of the day. <laughs> I wrote this down at 1045 this mm -hmm. morning. And you made a great point yesterday. 
Thank you very much. You're welcome. About the overreaction. I tend to do that sometimes. You, you, know. do, you do. You swerve right into it every now and then. <laughs> the overreaction may be the biggest in golf. And at 1045 this morning, my not top story, news of Tiger Woods' demise has been greatly exaggerated. Yeah. He, he was just so great that he set a bar that not even he could get over. Right. And he was pretty One, spectacular today. Look but, how happy Phil Mickelson is over five majors. Oh. And he should be. Yeah. Tiger's got 14. It's a lot. And it came in bunches, seemingly. And people now think it's just all a fraud. And if T Phil Mickelson can do in his 40s what he's doing, why can't Tiger? Like people who are tweeting this afternoon saying, yeah, that was great today and all, but do it in a major. Well, he has 14 times. Right. That has to count for something. Yeah, but not anymore. Well, he's going to win his I, fourth tournament of the year I'm, this I, weekend. That person, I'm sorry your attention spans the length of a tweet. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, two big, big... Big stories uh, breaking today. Huge stories breaking today and uh, still waiting on them to break. One, Greg Oden's decisions today. I don't know if you heard, but that's today. Greg Oden's making his decision Jim Gray on it? today. I don't think <laughs> he got so. covered. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they sent him there for it. Oh, ne never mind that that did raise money for charity. It did. Yeah. All right. I have to bring that up. Uh, but <laughs> Greg Oden's decision, still waiting. No decision yet from Greg Oden, still waiting on where he's going to sign. Also, the other big decision, the baseball suspensions. Uh, looks like looks like now maybe mon maybe Monday, maybe Monday. AP story in, in the paper of record mm -hmm. locally, the commercial field today. Looming playoffs could force an end to negotiations mm. in baseball's latest drug scandal as pressure builds to impose penalties so stars can still make the postseason. Yeah. How bad is it if you're doing that? That, that The story didn't go to say that. That's me. Back to the story. Monday appears to be the deadline for A-Rod and 13 others to accept suspensions for their ties to the biogenesis of America anti-aging clinic. A-Rod, they, they use A-Rod the second time. I did it the first time. Is expected to get a lengthy ban, but a penalty starting... That day would allow Texas all-star outfielder Nelson Cruz to return for October. Hmm. Well, right. So they missed 50 games. 50 games is not that big of a punishment for the reward that you could have by becoming a better player and getting a huge contract. Losing 50 games, really not that big of a deal. You get a $10 million a year contract, missing 50 games, all right, it sucks because you're out. Three and a half million dollars, three million dollars, but you're still getting the other six and a half, and you got that contract because of taking that. And, and how it sticks to baseball and doesn't to any other sport. And I know he's mostly an unknown offensive lineman, but I mean, in in the won't ads, you read that former Arkansas Razorback Demarcus Love of the Minnesota Vikings suspended first four games of the 2013 season for violating the NFL policy mm. on performance enhancing substances. It's just to crickets. Yeah, yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. And it, it, it started eh. in the NFL. I don't know what ground zero was, but if Balco was ground zero and the Bay Area was ground zero for baseball, and I think it was, and Rob, I'm scared that something crazy could come out and maybe tarnish maybe even impede Tony La Russa's beeline to the Hall of Fame next summer with the way, the way stories come out and then all of a sudden you're public enemy number one. But it started out there, and now we have a lot of proof. John Matuzic and Lyle Alzado with the Raiders. Mm -hmm. Ground Zero may have been there. Yeah, probably. And, and you know, the, the Steelers had trouble with it in the late 70s. Steve Corson, Mike Webb. The NFL has trouble with it still to this day. Doesn't stick it Regularly. All. Nothing. I uh, got a text regarding uh, Tiger and Phil. Phil hasn't had the injuries Tiger has had. Not sure Tiger can hold up physically. Well, Phil hasn't had the injuries Tiger's had. And again, five is still well, remarkable. Phil Mickelson did go through a lot of injuries and other stuff. 
injuries with the arthritis mm -hmm. that he says he said here he thought was going to end, going to end his career and then off the course stuff that that goes yeah. with life personally i think tiger swing is maybe a little bit too violent to keep that going for such a long time he might have to tone that down a little but bit but he's been able to have several incarnations he'll no be, question he'll be fine that, he, that tiger guy will be fine he he's had incredible acts opening act the little kid act on mm -hmm. the TV shows, the right, the young golfer we were hearing and reading, man, you know, the youngster in California. And then he was all that, one of the two or three greatest amateurs ever. Sixty-one today for Tiger Woods. In his twenties, in his thirties, so you know, it, it, it can all end next swing for any of them. Uh, coming up uh, here in uh, a few, we're going to have our Friday Five at Five. You are the athletics director at Texas. You need a new head coach, new football coach. Give us your short list. Your short list of five is what we're looking for. Uh, speaking of numbers, how about we do our, yes? With your buddy, Mac Brown. Mac Brown, that's my buddy, yeah. I met him uh, at the Big 12 Media Days a couple of years ago. Eli Savoy and I got our picture with him. Great dude. Let me tell you something. Big 12 Media Days was a lot different than SEC Media Days. Just a little clam bake, wasn't it? Hey, you guys want Turner Gill? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> free for all. Hey, can we get Mac Brown for like two minutes? Um, he's got fifteen. Yeah, so go ahead. Really? We did fifteen minutes with Mac Brown. Just, just us. Hey, you want, you, you want Gary Pinkle? Nah, it's okay. <laughs> We're good. I mean, it was incredible. Did you get Art Browse? Uh, no, because we, well, we we said no to Art. We, we didn't have enough time for everybody. You get RG3. Yeah, we said no to Art Briles because instead I was like, I'll do that quarterback guy that you guys have. That, went, uh, went, what is it, I, RG something? RG3? Later. Yeah, how about that? And one of the nicest kids ever met. Very, very, very together. Matt, Matt Brown's one of the nicest people Couldn't out there. Couldn't have been more pleasant. And, and I'm, I'm not trying to, to run him off, but we just know that Texas but. is <laughs> Texas. <laughs> All right, how about our number of the day? So listen, um... <laughs> Can I have your number? It is brought to you by Sleep Cheap. Oh, man. We could go today. Stats had the uh, had the wisdom teeth pulled. All four of them. Gone. Out. Medical miracle. Medical miracle. Didn't really feel a lot of pain. Uh, I mean, credit to the, to the to the wife being the nurse that she is. However, you were fine. You, If you would have had to, if I would have fallen over dead, could you work last Friday afternoon? Yeah, but I don't know what I would have been talking about. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure how it would have. I would. I mean, the show would have ended, and I would have probably looked at Bash and go, "Dude, what did we just talk about?" Bash, there's a smart aleck answer somewhere in there for us, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> of course there is. Oh, you mean like I'll, every I'll day? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you know, I had to I had to overcome that, recover from that, and even coming back Monday and talking for three hours, I was I was sore, man. You were fine, uh, and I was just exhausted, and uh, you know, the the pain medication just exhausting. It, it, I needed naps. And my mattress from uh, Sleep Cheap has helped me through it and gotten me great night's sleeps. And I'm, how much did you sleep last weekend? A lot. I mean, maybe two, three naps a day. Just man, that's tired. quality. Oh, uh, it was spectacular. Great mattress and even better drugs. Oh man, <laughs> what a, what a combination. Uh, the mattress you can get at Sleep Cheap. Uh, Rogues, you're, you're on your own. Talk to your physician about it. And all mattresses, brand new, no refurbished, no used mattresses, all with full manufacturer warranty with great deals like Fuller Queen Pillow Top mattresses as low as $149.99. All the memory foam uh, mattresses are a replica of Tempur-Pedic at a quarter of the price. I have one of the memory foam mattresses, and I got the memory foam pillow. Got to get the pillow. If you're going to get the mattress, you, you got to get the pillow, too. Just doesn't make a lot of sense if you don't. Uh, got the pillow as well, and uh, it just it's it's changed the way I sleep. You you might not think that the mattress really makes that big of a difference, but boy does it ever. If you've had yours too long, if you don't know how long you've had it, you've had it too long, or just in need of a new one, or you're moving, or going away to school, need a mattress, go buy Sleep Cheap. They have amazing deals, and they got good, great. Great way to help the customer as well. Layaway, no credit check financing available. All you have to do is have a checking account. You are approved. They have five stores in Memphis to choose from. One simple phone number, 503-9930, 503-9930. They are sleep cheap, and they bring us our big number of the day. Stats. It's five for the five teams represented in the top ten in the coaches poll, in the USA Today coaches poll. 
for the Big Ten, they only had five in the top 25. SEC had five in the top 10, and the AP will reflect about the same thing. Yeah, probably. Six in the top 13, five in the top 10. It's pretty darn impressive. Can, can any one of those five win at all? Could, and add LSU? Do you, does SEC have realistic six cracks at it? I would say no. I would say they have two, maybe three, maybe three. three. I think two. I think I think three, and I think one of those three is the one that's ranked the lowest. Well, the two. The easy answer on the two is one from the west and one from the east. Alabama, Georgia. You sort it out. I did sort it out. Alabama, Georgia. Okay. And my third would be LSU. There's a very real scenario of a Clemson, South Carolina rematch for the national championship. I don't think so. Possible. I don't think A&M can win at all. I think they come down a little bit. I don't bit think Clemson much. can win at all. I don't think South Carolina can win at all. I don't think, uh, I don't think Florida can win at all either. I don't think any of those. So you well, say I, you're up two. Georgia Bell. Back L- LSU. Where we, that's where we ended last that's year. my third. And they were in the mix. Yeah. So those would be my three. But unfortunately, now I've been convinced over the last couple of days that we're going to have a Ohio State-Louisville national championship. And I hope that's not the case. I don't think it will be. Right. Don't worry about it. Thank you. Number of the day? Ohio State and Michigan could rematch. They could play back-to-back weekends. Yeah. Number of the day? 1,000. 1,000 is my number of the day. Houston Astros, you know, they're in the American League these days, and they they strike out a lot. In fact, through 107 games, they've struck out as a team 1,000 times. That is incredible. That's over nine strikeouts a game. But the good news is you're running the pitch count up on the other pitcher. It's, It's true. It's the fewest games in Major League Baseball history for a team to get to 1,000 strikeouts. 107 games, 1,000 strikeouts. That is 55 a, left. Holy smokes. So they strike out seven times a game. Seven times 55 plus 1,000. They're striking out nine. Nine plus. It's 9.34579 if you want to carry it out a little bit. Nine, we'll go 9.3. Per game, they strike out. Someone in, per game. Someone in the ballpark running the K strikeout sign, busy. Oh, nine. May need rotate every time the Astros play. If you go to the game, you've got a shot to see history with the number of strikes. It's going to be at least nine. That's one an inning. Holy cow. That's an unbelievable number. No- a thousand in 107 games. Also, here's another little number for you from baseball. Number three. Number three. Since 1905, that's what, 108 years now? Only three pitchers have struck out 14 batters in three games in one season. Teddy Roosevelt won the Nobel Prize for mediating the Russo-Japanese War in 1905. How about that? He did not strike out 14 three times in a season. You no. Darvish did it last night. The other two? Russo-Japanese War. You Darvish. I knew it would be apropos. <laughs> <laughs> the other two, Randy Johnson, Roger Clemens, would be your other two that have uh, accomplished the feat. By the way, the, look, have you ever seen St. Andrews looking like that? It, it look, I mean, it looks like... It's as green as Memphis Country Club right now. Yeah, it looks like the John Deere Classic. I've never seen it look like it looks at the Women's Open. I'm sorry. Pretty amazing. It looks beautiful. Fairways actually. even. Yeah, tea boxes lovely, lovely, yeah. Uh, also, also uh, Chris Davis has now struck out in 24 straight games. Yeah, he had a couple... L- he longest one last night. Longest streak he had one in, or two homers last night. Did he? Have a couple yeah. Last night? Longest streak in Major League Baseball. That's pretty pretty incredible, too. All right, Friday 5 at 5, The your short list for head coach for the Texas Longhorns. When Max out, you need a short list well, here's some great, for your head coach. Great submissions here. Yeah, uh, and I, we'll get to some of these texts uh, here in a moment because... Uh, a lot of them are on my list and probably yours as well. I just can't believe it. Turn 62 on Halloween, Nick Saban's going to start over. 
So he's you, on a lot of lists. you wouldn't allow no. Nick Saban on the five. I, I, put, I wouldn't. I wouldn't allow. Saban, I have two coaches on my Spurrier, kick the tires, and, it, and Saban's on there. Gruden. No, I, I didn't put him on there. My two coaches to kick the top. I'm calling Nick Saban. I'm going to say, uh, I I have to call. I have I, I have to. Well, a, you're not calling Nick Saban. I know who you're calling, and it's a nine zero one number. Well, that's true. <laughs> I may, although I may call Nick. I'm out. Just say, hey Nick, let's just do this on our own. Don't 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 bother Jimmy. He's busy. Oh, that's not that going to go, go over. Well. <laughs> that's not how it's done. You know, you don't think that would yeah. work. Uh, so I'm kicking the tires on Nick Saban. I'm just I'm. See if there would be interest. See if there, I mean, if it's absolutely no chance, zero, you know, I just want to know. But I have to call to find out. I can't believe I'm even going to. I have to call to find dive out. Dive into this. He goes, okay. Or his representative goes, okay. What what money number are you coming up with? $10 million a year. How many years? Lifetime? Take it to whenever? Sure. We're Texas. We'll make that back on the network. Who do you know gets it? Hey, you make money on something nobody has. Well, we we think we get it. We okay. don't know. We're not sure, but they keep giving us checks. I don't know right. where they're coming from. Again, the cash. Do you know anybody that gets the Longhorn Network? No, I really don't. Okay. No, but I, I, I don't know. Five years, fifty million. Okay. Interested? No. Okay. Well, I just wanted to check. Thanks. So I'm kicking the tires. Because he's in a con- in a conversation at his current job. It's it's a Coach Bryant, Coach Saban conversation. He doesn't want to start over and get in a Coach Royal, Coach Saban conversation. Well, after this year, it could be Coach Saban wins. No. he can, uh, All right, After next year, it could be Coach Saban wins. No, because remember the number. The, I thought after next year, he, he would have it, finally. I think he'd need it pretty strong, 14 and 0, 14 and 0. Well, yeah. Or next year would be <laughs> 15 and 0. All right. So I'm going Nick Saban. I'm, yeah. I'm calling him. I, he's not on my five. He's not on my list of five because you wouldn't allow it. You went off the grid, back but, channel. But I'm, but I'm kicking the tire. I'm also kicking the tires. Meeting at the airport in St. Louis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also kicking the tires on another coach. Only because it would be either after this season or possibly after next season. And because of the type of coach he is, maybe things wouldn't be so cozy in the job that he currently is in. If if things were to go bad this year, it probably wouldn't be as cozy. Or if uh, if it didn't go as well this year, and then maybe next year wasn't as great. Maybe maybe he'd be kind of in a spot where players just don't like him anymore because of how he acts. I'm uh, I'm I'm going to see if Jim Harbaugh's interested. That's a kicking of the tires again. Not on my five, but of the two guys that I'm just going to. I'm just going to find out if there, we should we even call the five in any five tire kicker segment. <laughs> well, <laughs> did you bash when we, when we offered this premise? Did you get the tire kicking memo? That, that, that's why I'm getting kind of ticked off over I am here. Too. I, mean, I don't know. I was allowed to kick the tires on every single coach in the world. But you said five guys who I think they'd have a chance okay. to hire. I don't I, think those two have a chance. I've but got, I'm going to call and see. I've got a new list. Let's take a two iron across the hood of the car and just see what they say. <laughs> I mean, I could. Since you wouldn't let me put Saban, I'm at least making the call, and okay. and I think I would. Go ahead. Possibly make a call on Jim Harbaugh. All right, here are my five, <laughs> the real five. Thought we were staying at seven o'clock there for a second. Here we go. You batch. How are we doing on time? All right. Okay. All right. Uh, number one on my list because we got to go one through five. Right. Because I don't want to give you my fifth choice first. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, number one on my list, Pete Carroll, head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. I know you said you might not want to take the wife from Los Angeles to, to Seattle and then just take her to Fayetteville. But Austin's different. Austin's a little different. I said Fayetteville and Knoxville, and right. some only heard one. <laughs> Apparently me. Pete Carroll, number one no, on my list. You, did you send me those ugly emails? <laughs> yeah, well. Pete Carroll's number one on my list. Number two, I have two guys I'm staying in state for. Number two, Gary Patterson the TCU. I like it. Because I think I'd get him, and I think I, I, if Pete Carroll didn't want to come back to college, Pete Carroll's not interested. I think I'd get Gary Patterson. Is that sexy enough? Yes. Is that press he's, conference yes, winning? Yes, because he's a great okay. coach, okay. and he could be there the rest of his career. Well, with a five or six win season at the University of Memphis this year, you know who would vault to the top on For a TCU? short list at Texas Christian Absolutely University. Absolutely, would. 
Uh, number three on my list is Brian Kelly. Wow. This list is so much better than the tire kicking. <laughs> I mean, why not? I, I like it. He's at Notre Dame. You're, I, I'm, you're, I'm, nu you're nuking my list. He's at Notre Dame winning, going to a national championship game. Hey, Brian, here's the deal. It's not going to get better than it did last year, and you're at Notre Dame. We can certainly pay you a lot more money. I'll have Texas fans egg my house over my list. Number four, James Franklin, okay, the got, Vanderbilt head coach. That's one I have on it. And number five, also in the state, Art Bryles is my number five. I also have another, uh, for my Texas guy on the side list, Kyle Shanahan, former Texas Longhorn great, great offensive coordinator for the Washington Redskins, Kyle Shanahan. Number one for me would be any AD job I had, and it's Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern. Boy, I wanted He's to put him on my list. Northwestern. He played at Northwestern. He got the job. But what, when his previous he, coach passed away, he loves his school. He's you, done an amazing job. I think he stays there the rest of his career. Don't you think Northwestern people and big hitters would be proud? Yes. You know, our guy, Absolutely. he left us, but he left us for Texas. Yes, but I don't think he wants you know, He didn't leave for Iowa. I would love to put him on the list. I just don't think he would leave no, Northwestern. Two, but I love him. I, I love your pick. If you think winning at Northwestern is hard, James Franklin. Absolutely. Boy, you, you talk about a guy that gets the people in the program fired up. Three, Hugh Freeze. Talk about a guy who gets people in the program fired up. Four, last time at a big job, it didn't work so well. But he's a good coach. Rich Rodriguez. Huh. Five, you're talking about talk, walking into an impossible job and the questions and the answers in the press conference. And the relief he might get getting out of there. Number five, Bill O'Brien at Penn State. Boy, I thought about him too. I really like Bill O'Brien. I would be scared too that Bill. O I don't think I don't know if Bill O'Brien would leave. I mean, he, he could have gone to the National Football League if he wanted to. I think he's truly. He he's might. in it. He, nothing will ever make us forget, and should no, nope. nothing. Well. Yeah, one of these days, the story, it won't change. It's always going to be there at once, Happy Valley. But if he stayed a 20, 25-year run, it, in 20, 25 years, time will do a lot. Oh, yeah. It won't maybe I, ever be enough. I really like him. I I, I thought of him, too, but I, he just, just missed my life. Another guy who could just might. You, you make a scandal around sport between Jerry Sandusky and Aaron Hernandez, it's all a little pale. Yeah. I mean, A-Rod, compared to the, that? <laughs> Dude juiced. Oh, well. Okay. It's going to miss some games and then get a $60 million. All right, fine. <laughs> it's a thing. It and, and, and sadly, a lot of very serious things. DUI, spousal mm -hmm. battery. It, it, compared to Sandusky and Aaron Hernandez, it's just really small. Oh, yeah. No doubt about In, it. Anything. And what Bill O'Brien's done is incredible. Another guy who just missed my list of five, Charlie Strong. In Louisville as well was on my list. Uh, Bash, you're five. First of all, I think I'm I'm, I'm winning right now. I think you did too. <laughs> you're winning. <laughs> you beat me. <laughs> Actually, I, I'm with you, Stats. Bill O'Brien was first on my list. Wow. I like it. Yeah, Bill O'Brien was first on mine, and then I went. Uh, my second guy's David Shaw. I'm going to at least give him a call. See, just like Pat Fitzgerald, played at Stanford, coaches at Stanford. I think he's just a Stanford guy. I don't think. Maybe. I love him. But I thought can, about him, too, but I just don't think you can get him away from there. You get a call from Texas. That's got You got to at least think about it. Uh, third, I had Gary Patterson. Fourth, James Franklin. And fifth, I had Chris Peterson. Chris, Peter, well, Chris Peterson would scare me only because of Dan Hawkins. <laughs> it's the only reason. Thought about him, left him off. Got a lot of people texting in saying Brian Kelly. Well, he's got three years show cause right now. Or not Brian Kelly, I'm sorry. Chip Kelly. Leaving Philadelphia after a year. He's got a three-year show, show cause, so you'd have to wait a while on that one. And I don't know. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Pete Roussel will join us when we return here on Fish and Stats. We are the voice of Tigers fans. Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. 
Hey, I'm here with Greg Hapke, general manager at Acura of Memphis. Greg, I bought my last two automobiles at Acura of Memphis, and neither one happened to be Acuras. I went from my 425 horsepower Dodge Magnum to my 93 horsepower hybrid Toyota Prius. You guys have everything available. Peter, we carry everything that people are looking for. In fact, we have available over 180 vehicles of really all makes and models. And the Acura of Memphis difference is customer service and tremendous rates. We're also the only place in the Mid-South that you can get a certified Acura. These vehicles have a thorough title inspection, 150 point mechanical check, and for a limited time, we have 1.9% financing available on all certified Acuras. You won't find better customers service you won't find better vehicles than acura of memphis online at acuramemphis.com or go by and say hello 385 and ridgeway for the folks at acura of memphis Trading days are here, and your friends at Cougar Chemical are offering the best deals around. If you need a new pressure washer or any piece of cleaning equipment, bring your trade in and come on down to Cougar Chemical at 3725 Getwell Road. Drag it, push it, pull it, heck, you can even bring it in in pieces. No trade will be denied. Financing is available, and if your credit is no credit, that's okay. We take most forms of cash and all major credit cards, tax refunds, stocks, bonds, gold, silver, and diamonds. We won't be undersold. We want your business. Buy with confidence confidence with our 90-day price match guarantee. If you're new to the cleaning industry, you're still in luck. Cougar Chemical has been serving the Mid-South with environmentally responsible cleaning solutions since 1970. For all of your cleaning needs, Cougar Chemical is the place to go. Cougar Chemical has industrial, commercial, janitorial, and automotive cleaning equipment, chemicals, and supplies. Call Cougar Chemical today at 363-5000 or visit us on the web at cougarchemical.com. That's 363-5000 or cougarchemical.com. You'll see the dedication in every single step. You'll see it in the smiles when smiles are hard to get. You'll see it in the little things that add up to success. The caring and passion are the things that we love best. Wolf Chase Linden Brace is your Mid-South provider for orthotics and prosthetics. They are an ABC accredited facility and their practitioners are ABC certified. At Wolf Chase Linden Brace, their services include artificial limbs, legs and arms, braces of all kinds, and custom molded inserts. You can call them today at 901-507-7821 for their location on Highway 64 in between Germantown Parkway and Appling Road. Or visit them at their new location in Jackson, Tennessee. That number is 731-660-5900. Or visit them on the web at wolfchaselemonbrace.com. Yours. Chase Lim and Grace. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It's 5.30. I'm Bash. The second round of the Bridgestone Invitational Firestone Country Club is pretty much wrapped up. Tiger Woods looked like the old Tiger earlier today. Woods opened up his round today with a birdie eagle birdie en route to a 30 on the front side. Finished today tying his own course record and tying his career best. The 9-under for a round, firing a 61. Tigers 13-under for the tournament. Keegan Bradley and Chris Wood tied for second at 6-under, seven strokes back of Tiger. As far as the suspensions related to the biogenesis case in Major League Baseball, CBS is reporting that CBS Sports is reporting that the players' deadline to accept their suspensions appears to be on Sunday. Announcements are likely to follow on Monday. Alex Rodriguez has announced once again that he's willing to fight any suspension that comes forth and he wants to play as soon as possible. As a result of the Biogenesis scandal, Ryan Braun has lost yet another sponsor. Nike ended any relationship with Braun, cutting off all ties to the former player. It's no one day game going on right now in the big leagues. The Dodgers lead the Cubs 6-2 to two in Chicago. That one's in the top of the sixth inning. A couple of NBA notes as well. Still nothing new on Mo Williams. The Grizzlies are still a finalist for him, as well as the Utah Jazz, Miami Heat, San Antonio Spurs, and the New York Knicks. As far as Greg Oden goes, he's supposed to be making a decision today. Not sure what it's going to be yet. Finalists seem to be Miami Heat, the San Antonio Spurs, and the Dallas Mavericks. Sports reports brought to you by Frontier Western Store. Time for a new pair of boots. Frontier Western Store has just a pair in the famous boot showroom. Work boots and dress boots from Ariat, Rocky, Red Wing, and more. Frontier Western Stores on Goodman Road and Olive Branch and on the web at FrontierWesternStore.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Pete Roussel from CoachingSearch.com, our Friday afternoon guest coming up momentarily, but this weekend at O'Call, well, first of all, the semi-annual sales closing, ra- wrapping up up to 70%. 70%. Oh, goodness. 70%. I'm, I'm going by this weekend. 
Well, you should because yeah. it'll be cooking out tomorrow. And the other sale, kind of the renovation sale, the remodeling sale, it's also going on at O'Call Memphis Finest Apparel since 1859. What year did college football start? In 1870? Well, let's see here. 1969 was the 100th year, so it started 1869. So 10 years before college football even started, O'Call was in business. And I'll wow. bet you if they could have then, they would have people ready, for dressed right, the right way for college football. And this year, the Collegiate Collection by Peter Millar, I've never seen. I like wearing logo stuff. I got a Augusta National logo shirt on right now. You can't get that at Old Call. You can only get that at Augusta National. But I like logo <laughs> stuff, and they have it all. The, the 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 golf shirts, the classic stripe polo, the solid Lyle polo, uh, closer or more into the fall, going to have cashmere. But right now, before opening day, you've got to get by Old Call and check out the Peter Millar uh, shirts, and they've got every SEC team you can that every one of them all 14 if if they don't have it right there they can order it. they have university of memphis stuff i'm going to get in trouble with a lot of people right now i think the best looking shirt in the building is the blue and white stripe university of memphis shirt it's where you have you have to get by there before you even think about the tailgate scene or the college football road trips or the home games you got to get by old call they've got all the different labels including their very own the 1859 wrinkle free label the fall stuff's going to start coming in after they wrap up the end of this summer semi-annual semi sale up to 70% off. They'll be cooking tomorrow. Uh, and that sale includes uh, for selected shoes, the best shoe collection, the uh, uh, best shoe variety in the area, the Robert Talbot ties that Rob Fisher wore last mm -hmm. year on Grizzlies TV games. You can get those there. Visit their website, ocall.com. But go by there and get to know them. They will get to know you. And you'll, you'll have a friend. You'll have a lasting relationship with the people at O'Call, starting with the Levy family, the owners of O'Call, right down to all the sales clerks, down to the tailors, down to everyone. Just so friendly service in the Regalia Shopping Center. O'Call, Memphis finest apparel since 1859. A couple of texts on our Friday 5 at 5 of the uh, top five uh, on your short list for Texas head coach. Uh, one, we have Charlie Strong, uh, who I mentioned, uh, who was honorable mention on my list mm -hmm. of five, because I, I had a lot of that them. subset. <laughs> uh, one text that says, one, two, three, four, and five, Nick Saban. And he's a mercenary, so he'll move for the money. He's he's not, and he won't. Uh, i got another one that says James Franklin. We both had James Franklin on the list. Uh, and then another list, uh, someone texted in, Saban, Urban Meyer. Uh, also, Pete Carroll. Um, I believe Brian Kelly or Chip Kelly. It just says Kelly. Um, although, again, Chip Kelly with the three-year show costs. And then Will Muschamp on the list. Will Muschamp probably would have been on a lot of people's list last year, well, it was a coach two years waiting. ago, for sure. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I would uh, go that route. We were going to do our Friday 5 at 5 today, the top five Strength and conditioning coaches uh, going because into the college football year. season. It is. The Swallows have right. returned to Capistrano. And that's why we have Pete Roussel on today, <laughs> coachingsearch.com. Hello, Pete. Hey, guys. Glad to be with you this Friday <laughs> afternoon. And, and that's an interesting one because today's the day. <laughs> They're all great, today Pete. And tomorrow, when just about every head coach in the country finds a way to use those words, I, we, we got the best strength <laughs> coach in the country. They really you'll, you'll hear 120. 125 different head coaches say that. But 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 they're not where they want to be yet. Yeah. <laughs> but, but they have a exactly. great strength coach, so they got that. Exactly. Going. They've got a long way to go. <laughs> what have you heard more in your career, Pete? We just don't like our recruiting class, or we don't have a very good strength coach? <laughs> you know, it's funny because you'll hear all the cliches, everything that you hear in the first week of August camp. Uh, I just search out for the – for the interesting comments, you know, the, the new philosophy, anything new that a coach, anything original. And, uh, yeah, you'll get some, some new head coaches that have some different philosophies and things like that. But you're going to hear Dan Mullen praise Matt Bayless in the next 48 hours, <laughs> I guarantee you. It's almost contractually bound they do that. I think we were having a uh, lively discussion about Texas. We're not going to drag you into that because, as we said last Friday, one of the hallmarks of your great site is you, you don't do. You don't do it all, rumor and innuendo and hot seat stuff. So let's talk about what they do have 
uh, at the at the Texas program. They do have Mac Brown in his 15th year as the head coach, and the coordinators Major Applewhite on offense and Manny Diaz on defense. If I had to go into a year, I'd like to go into it with that staff. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting because you know Major had an opportunity to call plays uh, back at Alabama, and I think it was uh, Nick Saban's first year, 2007, I believe. And uh, you know, I think there's different parameters. Major's going to have a little, little different feel this time around. He's going to be different. He's going to try and incorporate the up tempo style of offense. Mac Brown was talking today that he'd like to get 15 to 20 more snaps a game than the Longhorns got a year ago with with Brian Harson. Not that one is right or wrong. They're just going to adjust their philosophy. And Mac Brown feels really comfortable because that's what David Ash did in high school. He, he was in an, an up-tempo style of offense. But, of course, when, when you do that, it also has an effect on your defense. A lot of people were down on Manny Diaz a year ago. And uh, I, I think Manny Diaz is a hell of a coach. I think he's going to rebound. I think Texas will be a lot better on defense this year. Uh, but let's see how, how it adds up at the end of the year. You know, they they need they certainly need to have a good season. New Mexico, they open with New Mexico State. They go to BYU, and we talked about Bronco Mendenhall some last Friday. And then they host Ole Miss, Kansas State, and then they go to Iowa State before the Red River shootout against OU. Undefeated quietens everybody. One loss goes a long way. That, that, that's not that tough a patch of schedule, but it's not easy either, is it? No, and, and going to BYU is never easy. I mean, that's a tough trip out there. It's one of the best places to play in all of college football, I think. I'll never forget the trip that I went out there on. We, I was actually at Stanford. We won on the last play of the game. is one of the most memorable, memorable games I ever coached in. But, um, yeah, that's not an easy trip. And Bronco Mendenhall, he's doing the same thing that Mac Brown's doing. He's elected to uh, move to an up-tempo style of offense. He, he completely uh, overhauled his offensive staff, brought in Robert Anai as his new offensive coordinator. Anai spent last year in Arizona with Rich Rodriguez, coached previously at BYU, so he kind of knows what he's getting into, the kind of players that they have out there. and. Uh, I think BYU certainly will be better offensively. It's just how much of an effect will that have on their defense? Bronco Mendenhall said a couple of weeks ago, we're going to play 15 to 20 more snaps a game on defense, and we know that this year. Of course, a year ago they were one of the best in the country, and, and they did lose Ziggy Ansaw and a couple of other really good players, but that's going to be a really, really important game for both teams early in the season. Pete, we heard earlier today, well, we've really heard in the last couple of weeks how Hugh Freeze trying to temper the excitement um, and the expectations. How difficult is a coach to come across and do that without sounding like, boy, he, he doesn't believe in his team? Because I, I believe, like many people say who cover Ole Miss, they might be better this year than they were a year ago, but it might not really reflect in the record. How do, how do you say that without disappointing people? Well, two things. One, Hugh Freeze may be telling his team something a little different than what he's telling the public. True. Okay, and there's no question that he believes in his team, and uh, certainly they've upgraded their talent in the offseason. I think they had, of all the teams in college football, one of the 10 best off seasons in college football. I think with Bo Wallace coming off shoulder surgery, that's the, the, still the big concern. And really for the first time all off season, you heard Hugh Freeze today mention that it is a, a, a it's very much of a concern to him right now because Wallace is going to be limited in his throwing during August camp. And when you're talking about a guy who threw an interception once every 22 passes, or passing attempts last year who didn't go through spring ball and now his reps are going to be limited uh, in August camp, that, that certainly is a concern. And the one thing that nobody's talking about, I know they signed two quarterbacks uh, back in February that they both think you know really highly of, but to me the transfer of Mikhail Miller last week, that, that to me that puts Ole Miss in a scary situation because – if Bo Wallace were to go down, uh, you, you don't want to play a whole season with Barry Brunetti as your starter. He's capable of, 
uh, of managing the team, but I don't know if he can go into to LSU and to, you know, to just the, the big SEC games and really win the game for you. And, and that's a concern to me. I, I just hope that Bo Wallace stays healthy for freeze. Yeah, I, I said last year about Barry Brunetti, he had, and I'm, I, I meant it most flatteringly, he had good minutes last year, kind of the in the basketball parlance. I don't know that you want to throw him in there for good halves in good games. Let's talk about Bo Wallace. Last year he was at 22 touches, 17 interceptions. Tyler Russell was 24 and 10. Give me a successful season, a stat line for Tyler Russell, touchdown to interceptions, and for Bo Wallace. Yeah, I mean, Brett, I just, I'm just not a big, big, I'm, I'm not a stat guy. I mean, I, I hate talking. It, the bottom line is you got to win. You got to manage the team and you got to make the big plays when they matter. You know, you, you know, Hugh Freeze isn't going to care, uh, you know, what his stat line is as long as he wins. So that you think and, the Ole Miss uh, could win eight, nine games and he had another 22 and 17 year? They could. Well, here. They could, and here's the reason why. I think the Ole Miss defense should be outstanding this year. You know, to me, college football starts with two things. It starts with your defensive line and specifically depth on the defensive line and then your quarterback. Well, you look at Ole Miss, and they've got eight or nine players that they're going to be able to roll through uh, up front. And when you add Robert Kim Dietschy, to that list, and the the junior college transfer, uh, his name slips uh, Levon Hooks. Hooks, Hooks. You know, and I I haven't seen him, but you know, five star guy coming in, they really think highly of. You know, I can see where Ole Miss on a third and seven plus type of situation where they go to a three three defensive end uh, personnel, kind of like the New York Giants used to with with Tuck and Umanura and and Jason Pierre, Paul, or, or, or Strahan, and, and have Kim Dietschy, C.J. Johnson, and uh, and uh, what's the other Channing one? Ward. Uh, Channing Ward on, on the field at the same time. And when you can do that and you can get pressure with just a four-down rush, uh, and not to mention Isaac Gross, who had an unbelievable game against Alabama. Then you allow your secondary to play coverage and, and mix and match coverages, and that's where it becomes difficult for for a quarterback. I think Ole Miss has a chance to be to be really, really good on defense. What about State? Well, you know, it's funny because nobody's talking about Mississippi State. I kind of think Dan Mullen likes that. You know, one thing – you got to keep in mind is they had they had no distractions all off season. You know nothing negative came out of Starkville, which shows the players are you know on board. They're they're focused. They're doing what they're supposed to do, and that's always a good sign. But the other thing is on both sides of the ball on the line of scrimmage, they have talent and experience coming back. You combine that with a senior veteran quarterback who's played on the road, played a lot of football games and had, had, didn't finish the season a year ago playing like you would hope, but they're going to do some things differently all, uh, uh, this year offensively to really help him. They're going to go under center a little bit more. They're going to uh, change up their run game a little bit. And uh, listen, you know, every, everybody's talking about Mississippi State, fifth or sixth in the West, you know. I, I just wouldn't, you know, don't, don't, that might not happen. You know, Mississippi State's capable of finishing, to me, they're capable of finishing a third or a fourth in the conference. Pete Rizal with us, coachingsearch.com. Pete, Florida Gators really need to work on their offense, 12th in the SEC passing offense last year, and they start camp without their quarterback, without their starting running back. They don't have any receivers back. They, they're working out four true freshmen to possibly play the receiver position. Um, how, how do you, how do you improve in that circumstance? Well, you know, I talked to Jeff Driscoll at the Manning Passing Academy. He he's really excited about his wide receivers. I mean, and that's the thing that even in the preseason magazines, people everybody's down on the Florida receivers. Well, Driscoll tells me he's really excited about them. And then Will Muschamp says the same thing yesterday at his at his press conference before. Uh, August camp started in Gainesville, 
uh, rent piece has indicated the same thing. And, you know, I think that's going to be really important because the running game ought to be fine with their offensive line and the talented group of running backs that they have. They've got a superstar coming in, a true freshman, uh, to go along with, with Matt Jones. And, uh, you know, surely Will Muschamp and, and Brent Pease didn't want to have to go maybe 10 days, maybe two weeks without their starting quarterback because of the emergency appendectomy. But, you know, that's something I think they can overcome. I think they'll beat Toledo either way uh, because they'll play great defense early on and they'll force turnovers uh, and they'll, they'll win the line of scrimmage, quite frankly, in that game. But uh, I think the Gators, you know, Bruce Feldman from – CBS Sports actually picked the Gators to win the East. I, I, you know, I still think uh, Georgia's going to win it, but I like Bruce's thinking. You know, he's the only person out there kind of kind of threw that out. And um, you know, I think the Gators that that game's gonna, I think that game will decide the East, the, the uh, Georgia Florida game. Does Kevin Sumlin have to do anything with Johnny Manziel other than let, hey, let's just go practice, let's get started? Golly, they are, I, I, I pity the reporter that asks a silly question to Kevin Sumlin after the first practice <laughs> in College Station because someone he's done this four or five different times. He'll look at you like you've just really, really frustrated me with that question. He, he gives you, you the, I mean? the rock look. Yeah, he'll, yeah, he does. He'll put you on the spot. And uh, I can I can guarantee you uh, that he won't be in the mood to discuss anything that he's already talked about in the last couple of weeks about Johnny Manziel. Pete, you you referenced earlier a, a big win for 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 you guys when you were at Stanford at BYU in a, a tough place to play. Have you ever been on the elevator and missed? a winning or a losing play going from, from the coach's box up to the elevator and down to the field and then all that transpires? Yeah, no, but I can tell you the the seven overtime game, Ole Miss against Arkansas. Y'all pulled the elevator is, out, didn't you? <laughs> this is a true story. It goes into the third overtime, and we thought the Ole Miss, I was on the Ole Miss staff at the time as a grad assistant, and we thought, that the game was over because no game had ever gone at that point into a third overtime. And so we actually kind of packed up our notebooks and we're literally, we're walking our, our six coaches that are up in the box. We're walking out of the booth. We're going to the elevator and John Latina, who was our offensive line coach, offensive coordinator at the time. He said, Hey, hang on guys. Hang on. He said, nobody's leaving the field. And we kind of just stood there for about 30 seconds. Get back to work. <laughs> yeah. He, said, uh, hey, uh, he called Kurt Roper, the quarterback. So he said, Kurt, he said, we're still playing. And we all got back in our seats. And I'll never forget that. Of course, the game went into the seven overtimes. At the time, it was the longest game ever in college football. And, you know, we ran the same play that we beat Alabama on earlier in the season. Mm-hmm. Silver. Silver left Zemo, 989, two cross, B flat. And uh, we got tackled on the one yard line. Arkansas won. I think it was 58 56. And, and I know you remember do you, the, the score at the end of regulation? Score at the end of Brent, you might be the only person <laughs> in America that knows that. Se- I don't know. Se- well, I, and, and I'll tell you why I know. 17 17, because in our friend John Thompson's contract, in Arkansas, he had language in it on finish, you know, and nationally points allowed, and he said that game mm-hmm. blew it up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> he holds Eli Manning to 17 in, in four quarters, and then overtime takes over. And, and I tell you, an odd thing from the rematch two years later, you go back and you look at that box score, you'll never think Eli Manning would outrush Matt Jones. He actually had more yards rushing in 2003 in the rematch against Arkansas than Matt Jones, well, one of the great scramblers ever. Well, that's fine, but a, a year later, I mean, we went to Fayetteville, Ooh, and yeah. it was fourth and inches on the 50-yard line early in the game, and Houston Nutt called a naked – he went two tights, three – or three tights, two backs, just called a naked bootleg with Matt Jones, and 
he he dunked it over the goalpost. He, I mean, nobody he, was winning. He could have he could have scored naked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Russell. It, Eli never did that. I can assure you. No. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. We always appreciate your time. We'll talk to you again real soon. Okay, guys. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Thank you, man. Pete. CoachingSearch.com. Pete Broussel is uh, where you can get all uh, his great stuff on Twitter at Coaching Search as well. We'll take a break. Come back. Wrap it up. Fish and Stats, Sports 56, 87, 7 FM. Have you downloaded the Sports 56 WHBQ app yet? Get it today on iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry. Free. Only from Sports 56 WHBQ. Keep your car looking like new. It only takes a few minutes at Car Wash USA Express. Washes start at just $5 and the vacuums are free with purchase. Clean your car as often as you like with a Car Wash USA Fast Pass, starting at just $24.99 per month. For convenience and safety, they always have an attendant on duty. Visit Car Wash USA Express at any of their eight locations in the greater Memphis area. Visit CarWashUSAExpress.com to find a location near you. Car Wash USA Express. A dirty car is a dirty shame. Interest rates are rising, and the real estate market is and has been blazing hot. And if your home hasn't sold yet, why not? This is Sheldon Rosengarten with Marks Bensdorf, the oldest real estate company in town. I recently had a contract on a house in 18, 18 hours. Another took 21 days, another in three days. Were they priced too low? No. It all involved preparation, plus my highly successful strategic marketing program, which includes superlative internet exposure and even a shell bucks option. The plain and simple truth is that being realistic in your pricing and expectations, being aware of what the buyers are looking for, and being sensitive to the market around you can make the difference in whether you sell or sit. So if you're thinking of selling, remember to talk to two to three real estate brokers and make sure that I'm one of them. Find out the difference in what I do and what others may not do. Call me, Sheldon Rosengarten, 682-1868, or through my website, memphisrelocate.com, at 682-1868, or memphisrelocate.com. Whoa, you really did it! Yep, the only office in the world with bunk desks. Yeah, you're really on top of each other. How's it working? Oh, Copy spills are a problem, and Andre's a little tall for his bunk, but we save a ton in overhead. Why not switch to FedEx? They can help you save with cost-effective services and solutions like FedEx Ground and FedEx Smart Post. Come on, people, they're bunk desks, not jungle gyms. Money-saving solutions. FedEx. Solutions that matter. Go to FedEx.com slash solutions that matter. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Greg Oden still hasn't decided where he's going yet. I wish Greg Oden would. He's had some tough breaks. He's, he was he's not amazing. Bust. He's not LaRue Martin, Hashim B. Bust. He's not, in, he's not Michael Ola with candy. A bust pick. Well, you just don't know it. You Never know about it. Yeah, but when you have number one, you want it to. Especially when number two turns out the way he did. Certainly hurts. Uh, Tiger Woods, you know, today, 61, course record, which he owned already. Tiger Woods, after today, has now finished 1,100 stroke play rounds in his PGA Tour career. 1,100 stroke play rounds in his PGA Tour career for Tiger Woods after today. His round today was better than 1,096 of them. How about that? That's a little nugget to take you into the weekend. That's a big one. That's what Make I, my knees and back hurt thinking about that many that's what I, for Tiger That's what I like to do. Just kind of give you that little oh, nugget 17, right on into the overtime. weekend. That was pretty good. Another good nugget uh, as well, taking us into the weekend. Boy, there was a lot we just didn't get to today. So we we'll may come back and do it tomorrow. Probably not, uh, but we'll get to it Monday. I'd be here tomorrow. I'm, 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 I'm a little busy. I'm going Bash over to be I'm here going tomorrow. To tomorrow. What time are you on, Bash? 10? You and uh, John Harden. What time does Harden get in on Friday night? Oh, he beats me. Oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> I'd never hear early enough of that. Well, they should have called that show the Hangover Group. <laughs> group. We can change it. <laughs> we'll give them any ideas. That's going to do it for us uh, here on this Friday afternoon. Thank you for joining us today and all week. We'll do it again next week. We'll be here at 3 o'clock on a Monday. I hope you can join us then as well. Make sure to tune in tomorrow. Bashing uh, John Harden, Hard Bashing. That comes your way at 10 a.m.
for Bash for Stats. I'm Fish. Have a great weekend, everyone, and keep it right here on Sports 56, 87, 7 FM. Hey, are you a busy adult ready to make a change to improve your future? Southwest Tennessee Community College is really affordable, about half the cost of your average state university. Busy adults can attend classes at Southwest before work, after work, even on weekends. You can learn anywhere, anytime with online classes. And Southwest accelerated and fast-track classes mean you can finish coursework in as little as 6 to 18 months. Plus, graduates from Southwest have a very high job placement rate. What are you waiting for? Call 901-333-4399 or go online at southwest.tn.edu forward slash recruitment. It's golf season again, folks, and that means the Mid-South Golfer Radio Show, sponsored by Lads, is back in prime time. Join Rob Fisher, Brett Norsworthy, and former PGA Tour professional Bob Walcott as they broadcast live from Tunica National each Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. They'll break down each week's events, have knowledgeable guests to share their insights, discuss what's going on both locally and nationally, and tell you how to improve your game with Bob's Tip of the Week. That's the Mid-South Golfer Radio Show from 3 to 4 each and every Thursday, sponsored by Lads, your trusted source for all your turf, golf, and utility needs. Tunica National's three-person scramble is here, and I'll be out there swinging the sticks, and so should you. Call Tunica National at 866-833-6331 before each and every Thursday at 530 and enter your team. Here's why. 30 bucks gets you nine holes with a cart, a chance to win great prizes from Tunica National and the Gold Strike Casino for the closest to the pin, and a free dinner buffet after play. This year, each week's winning team of any flight qualifies for the Tournament of Champions at the end of the year with an after party at the Gold Strike Casino. Tunica National's three-person scramble in the TOC, sponsored by the Gold Strike Casino, is back. Hey, I'm off. And I'm Jeremiah. What did you do to my house, man? We've been pranking people our whole lives. Where's the baby? Whose poop is that? Now we're turning it into a business. Gunpowder, some gasoline, this and he hits it, it's gonna go. We take your ideas, our redneck know-how, and make the ultimate prank. Oh, if you won't pay back, you need us. <laughs> Hillbillies for Hire. All new episodes, Sunday at 8, 7 central on CMT. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't become paralyzed by fear. Take action now. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help. Our team of experienced tax attorneys can get you protected. Stop collection and negotiate a permanent settlement with the IRS and state, potentially saving you thousands of dollars. At U.S. Tax Shield, our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. No games and no tricky upsells. That's why we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Put an end to your torment. Get protected. Get the shield. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 800-299-1855. That's 800-299-1855. 800-299-1855. The Voice of the Fan.
24-7 NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com. John Stash Hour Show, NBC Sports Radio. Let's talk some NFL and do it with the uh, former Patriot and Saint Heath Evans from the NFL Network joins us. Heath, obviously, big story the last couple of days has been Riley Cooper and his use of the N-word and uh, the development today that he's actually uh, going to leave the team for some activities. It, uh, it's his story that seems to have some legs, but what I wanted to ask you, and we heard the LaShawn McCoy quote yesterday, he said, look, I'll block for the guy, I'll, I'll play with him, but, you know, there's been some damage done. So knowing the NF, the dynamic of an NFL locker room like you do, do you expect that to be a problem if uh, if guys have problems like this with Cooper? Uh, well, I mean, I've said even yesterday on air, I said that, you know, if I'm putting my owner or GM or head coaching hat on, um, I'm probably letting Riley go, not because it's the unpardonable sin, not because he doesn't deserve forgiveness, and not because guys shouldn't forgive him because they should. I and mean, we've all made mistakes, and we've all hurt people's feelings, and at times we've we've probably devastated people. Um, but truth be told, you know, you look at Jeffrey Lurie, um, you look at Chip Kelly. I mean, their main focus is how do we win ball games, and how do we create the dynamic inside a locker room in the clubhouse that is going to afford us the best opportunity to get that done. And you just you just can't have any room for distractions. And um, sad to say, that's what this has become. All right, I know you were at uh, Buffalo Bills camp, correct? Um, yes, sir. Who do you think will be the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills week one? I think it's going to be EJ. You know what? Um, it's, I think both the rookie quarterbacks in, in the uh, New York camps, the Jets and Buffalo, I think those rookie quarterbacks will end up walking away with the uh, week one starters. Did you get a chance to see Manuel? I mean, did he look good from what you saw? I did. You know what? Um, it, it's funny. After spending a day with the Jets and a day with uh, Buffalo, I would say that Geno uh, probably looked a little better than EJ, but uh, I thought in the drills I saw, the seven-on-seven, seven, the team run, team play action, um, uh, the overall team period to wrap up the day's practice, um, that EJ was the sharper quarterback over Kevin Cobb. Um, and I just think if, if the race is going to be even, uh, if you look across the division at the success that Ryan Tannehill had last year, um, why wouldn't you go with the quarterback that, that you made the moves to to get in the first round? We're talking NFL with Heath Evans here, NBC Sports Radio. Let me ask you about you a couple of your former teams. Uh, I was surprised last year. I, I didn't think that the absence of Sean Payton New Orleans would have – such an impact. Clearly it did. So what does it mean now that he's back coaching the team? Well, I think the biggest thing is you get that instant accountability. You know, everyone always talks about energy and, and all those things, and that those are true. I mean, Sean's energy level is off the charts. I mean, he is he's one of a kind when it comes to inspiring and motivating and, and just being in um, a position to constantly keep his team focused, whether it's week three of training camp or whether it's week 17 of the regular season. But the one thing that Sean does extremely well, like a Bill Belichick or a Tom Coughlin or a Mike Tomlin, is it's, you know, when, when you mess up, um, and Sean knows it all. He knows the special teams' duties. He knows the defensive duties. He knows, of course, the offensive duties. And so, you know, when you let your team down, when you're walking off to that sideline on a, on a given Sunday, he's in your face. And that, that accountability, that pressure that he demands and that he supplies to that team uh, was thoroughly missed last year. And watching the games week in and week out, you know, offense was still putting up a bunch of points. They were still racking up yards. Defense was obviously atrocious, but um, they lacked that that fire and that accountability that he brings to the table. And do you think Bill Belichick's got something up his sleeve? He had two really good tight ends. Now he definitely doesn't have one of them, and he may not have the other one, Rob Gronkowski, at least for a while. Do you think he's just going to replace him with other tight ends, or do you think we're going to see something maybe drastic out of coming from <laughs> Coach Belichick? Well, if he, if he replaces a Rob Gronkowski, yeah, he's he's a doggone magician. So, uh, and there's definitely no replacing Hernandez. I mean, that's the thing about Aaron um, in this horrible situation. Um, there's nobody out there like an Aaron Hernandez. There's no one out there that's six three, two fifty that does the things he can do for the New England Patriots or could do. Um, with Rob, I think they'll find a way to get him healthy, but. 
We now interrupt this program to bring you the following presentation from Sports 56 WHBQ. It's time for Redbirds Warm Up, a pregame look at the Memphis Redbirds and all the latest news surrounding the St. Louis Cardinals. Redbirds Warm Up is brought to you by All Covered IT Services, by Konica Minolta. They keep an eye on your computer network so you don't have to. Call All Covered today at 901 382 2500. Well, good evening, everybody. A great way to start your weekend. Baseball at AutoZone Park. The barbecue nachos are fresh and hot and ready to go. And so are the Memphis Redbirds as they play host to the Tucson Padres. Steve Selby, John Papadopoulos with you tonight. Yep, we're going to push them on to Nashville after the ball game tonight. Las Vegas will head west on I-40 from Greer Stadium. And will be joining us here at the zone tomorrow night. Well, let's talk about game three last night. Boone Whiting got the hill for the Birds. He had not won a game since the 11th of June. Not necessarily his fault. Mayan Andres, a right-hander on the hill for the Padres. Both would throw well. Tucson, though, got on the board in the first inning. A leadoff single, Dan Robertson, with one out, he advanced on a wild pitch. He goes to third base on a fly ball to right field. And with two outs, Brandon Allen did some damage. Target in. Here it comes. Line to left field. That's a base hit and a one nothing Tucson lead. He didn't quite get it all the way in. And Allen drives in his 51st run, and he gets it done with two strikes. One nothing to score all the way to the bottom of the sixth inning when the Redbirds would get on the board. Mike O'Neill leading off the inning with a second hit of the ball game. Jermaine Curtis gets a base hit. Then Colton Wong made it three in a row. Nothing and one. Ground ball through the right side. That'll be a base hit. O'Neill is getting sent home. Here's Francisco's throw. It's up the first baseline and kicks away from Robinson, who instructs Andres to cover the plate. The Redbirds have tied it. Curtis to third. Wong was hustling to second on the throw home. And the Birds are in business here in the sixth inning. It's a 1-1 ball game. And the Redbirds in the next at bat with Jamie Romack thought they had grabbed the lead. A stretch of the pitch. High fly ball to left. That should give you the lead. Settling under it is Allen. Tagging is Curtis. Here he comes. Allen cuts it loose. Heading home. And... He is out, out on the tag by Robinson, and here comes Pop. I was set to screen safe. He's under the tag. The Blankney says he is out. Yeah, replay showed that uh, Curtis kicked the foot of Robinson away and got under the tag, but he was out. And 1-1 it was all the way to the bottom of the 10th inning. Brad Boxberger on the hill at 1-2-3-9th, the 10th inning. Not as good for him. Justin Christian, an infield hit, starts the inning. Chris Swagger, with Christian running on the pitch, gets a perfect sacrifice punt down, winning run at second, one away. Travis Tartamella's base hit pushed Christian to third base. Up comes pinch hitter Ryan Jackson. Count even, two balls, two strikes. And it's popped up to right. It's not deep. Francisco back a couple steps, got it. Here comes Christian. Here comes the throw. He is saved! He is safe. The Redbirds have wanted an extras by a score of 2-1. to one. And uh, the win going to Sam Freeman, two scoreless. He is now 6-2. and two. Boxberger fell to 2-4. and four. Boone Whiting, five innings, five hits, only one run. Another no decision, but you know what? He was part of the winning uh, outing by the Redbirds, who will try and take the series with a win here tonight. Well, Ryan Jackson got the game-winning RBI last night, and he is the guest of John Papadopoulos when Redbirds warm-up returns. Uh-oh, an error on the shortstop. You know, I don't even think he saw that one coming. IT problems are a lot like that. Hardline drives. They come at you fast and require deft reflexes to avert costly errors. That's where managed IT services from Service Assurance come in. They keep a keen eye on your IT so you can focus on your business. Let Service Assurance eliminate the internal distraction caused by having to manage your IT systems, users, and personnel. Their 24-7 server and network monitoring service manage IT environments of all sizes. They take the worry out of IT with tools and software designed to report key metrics and dashboards on your business's critical servers and networking devices. All for one easily budgeted, predictable cost. For over 20 years, Service Assurance has been the Mid-South's leader in information technology. And now Service Assurance is part of All Covered, the nation's leading provider of managed IT services. Call them at 382-2500 to find out how they can make a difference for you. That's 382-2500. Call the IT All-Stars of Service Assurance today or visit them online at allcovered.com. The Redbirds and Service Assurance, two hometown teams you can count on. 
Great to have you aboard. Welcome back in as we continue on Redbirds Warm Up. I'm John Papadopoulos. The Redbirds with an exciting walk-off win in extra innings last night. And joining me right now is infielder Ryan Jackson, who had the game-winning RBI. You get the sack fly to finish it. And I'll tell you what, you don't get a lot of walk-off wins. Pretty exciting last night. Yeah, you know, it was great for our team, too, because we've been playing we've been playing good baseball, and it's been kind of tough to pull out some vic victories as of late. So, uh, you know, it's always a lot of fun, you know, for the guys when there's a walk-off win. It's a lot of excitement, and, uh, you know, it brings a good atmosphere into the clubhouse. Now, take me through the at-bat. You come in as a pinch hitter, which is always tough. You're a little bit, uh, you've been on the bench, maybe not as, as loosened up. Take me through the at-bat. What's going through your mind when you step up? Well, for me, specifically, you know, I, I really don't like to swing at the first pitch when I'm coming off the bench because I haven't really seen a pitch, you know, the whole game. So I'm more susceptible sometimes, as of lately, if I swing at the first pitch, you know, to kind of miss it, and then you're kind of in a hole as a hitter. So I like to see a pitch. And then uh, last night in that at-bat, I'm usually, uh, you know, picking out one pitch early in the count that I can put my best swing on, and if I miss it, then... You know, in that circumstance, I'm just trying to get the ball in the air with somewhat of the barrel so that it goes far enough to get the run in. And, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to able to do that last night. A relatively close play at the plate. He's in there easily. The throw wasn't perfect. But when you hit the ball, what are you thinking as you're running toward first base? Did you think you got enough? Yeah, I knew I had enough because we got Christian on third, and Christian runs really well. And uh, so I knew if I just, you know, got, got enough to be a routine routine ball to the to any outfielder then you know we'd have a good chance so that you know that was my main motive you know after I uh, swung through the the oh the one one pitch and uh, that was pretty much it and you know Christian did a good job of just turning on the Jets and coming home talking with Redbird shortstop Ryan Jackson game winning RBI uh, sack fly last night now after he comes in, we see the save call, the dugout empties, and you guys had quite a celebration out there after the game. What was that like? Yeah, it was fun. You know, I you know around the first, and uh, I think uh, there's a bucket of water was involved, <laughs> uh, which was nice because it's really hot here in Memphis, and uh, a couple cups of water, and uh, you know the guys were excited, and you know any, you know any time that you know we get to cut loose and have some fun, and, you know over a victory, it's great because it kind of uh, it tends to carry over, you know, throughout the season. Does this get a little bit more exciting having a pennant race now that we've hit August and April and May? You know, anything could happen at that point, but now it does seem to be a little bit more of a team concept. Would that be fair to say later in the season? Absolutely. Uh, you know, anytime, you know, you know, winning cures everything. So, you know, if you're not winning, you know, all the negatives are pointed out, and it's because you're not winning ball games. So, you know, we're winning games. We're having a good year this year, and and you know things things are uh, on the positive side for our club, and uh, you know it brings the locker room together. And you know the main objective now with the playoff hunt in mind is to just keep winning ball games so that we're there we're there uh, at the end of September ready to play for a championship. Talking with Redbird shortstop Ryan Jackson, who had the game-winning RBI sack fly last night. Let's talk a little bit about your season so far. You were hitting. 330, 340 earlier in the year. Your numbers are still very good. It's such a long season. Talk a little bit about the endurance element of baseball. I don't know if we spend enough time on that. We all look at numbers. We all look at results. But it really is the ultimate grind, isn't it, to get through a season? Absolutely, because in baseball, you know, uh, you know you're know, you not going to trick them for a whole year. And, you know, the opponents are going to make uh, an adjustment when you're going hot. And then, uh, you know, especially as a uh, – as a hitter or an everyday player, you're gonna hit that you're gonna hit that low because you're gonna have to adjust to uh, to what the opposition's doing, and the best players in the game adjust quicker than than most. So you know it's, it's just uh, it's a marathon. You're gonna have that speed bump, and then it's you got to uh, you just got to pull through, and make the adjustments when the when the league is adjusted to you when you're having success, and uh, you know, just continue to rise above and, and uh, prevail over the, the, the rough times. And, uh, and that goes for pitching and hitting because, you know, when you're successful, they're going to figure out how to make you unsuccessful because that's the name of the game. It's a competitive, competitive game. And uh, baseball is one of those sports where 
mentally you got to just keep going, keep pushing, and uh, you know if you keep going and, and you work smart, you'll you'll prevail. Ryan, your numbers this year uh, have been really good, a little bit better than last year. Your doubles are high. You've drawn a lot more walks, though. You seem to be a little bit more selective. Talk about the evolution of your game in that regard. Yeah, well, last year for me, I was uh, I would find myself in between, you know, a lot. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, in between the fastball and then in between the off speed too. So you're kind of just like you're not on. You're not on any particular pitch, and uh, you know that went on off and on a little bit last year for me. So this year, you know, I came in and uh, just tried to uh, make sure make sure I'm on time, and that was the biggest thing is on time. And anytime you're recognizing the pitches earlier, you're gonna be you're gonna have a better pitch selection. So anytime you can pick it up early usually results in more walks, and you know anytime you're picking it up picking the baseball up late. That's when you know your slumps come, strikeouts, and you know just not hitting the ball, hitting the ball square. So uh, that's pretty much been the the biggest difference for me is just working on my timing and making sure I'm seeing the ball early enough to, to put the barrel on it. Ryan, thanks for the time. Well, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank we'll you. Come back with more as we continue on Redbirds warm up. That's strike three, and he is out of here. Is your IT provider swinging and missing? If you're tired of slow IT service and support or frustrated with an unreliable network, then it's time you considered a pinch hitter for your company's technology. For more than 20 years, Service Assurance has been the Mid-South's leader in information technology. When you partner with Service Assurance, you're guaranteed that they'll fix your network's problems the right way. They're responsive, easy to work with, and based right here in Memphis. They understand your needs and address them quickly. Service Assurance has a proven track record of saving clients money while making them more efficient. And now they're part of All Covered, the nation's leading provider of managed IT services. Give them a call today to schedule a free consultation. Call them at 382-2500 to find out how they can make a difference for you. That's 382-2500. Put your current IT provider on the bench where they belong. Call Service Assurance today at 385-2500 or visit them online at allcovered.com. The Redbirds and Service Assurance, two hometown teams you can count on. Well, time to talk Cardinal baseball as we get ready for Redbirds and Padres baseball at AutoZone Park. Hope you come see us to start your weekend. Well, the Cardinals avoided that five-game sweep at the hands of the Pirates last night to the tune of 13 to nothing. Nothing like an eight-run seventh to get it done. The 13 nothing, the final. Oh yeah, pretty good pitching. Only five hits allowed. Joe Kelly got the start and got his second win. He is two and three. Joe went six innings. Three hits, no runs, walked four, and struck out four. Manus, Blazik, and Mojica, each with an inning of scoreless relief. And that's generally, JP, how players come out of slumps with a big night, and the team who's been in a slump comes out with a big number, and that's exactly what St. Louis did last night. Yeah, big win last night, obviously a big win. You lose that one, and really it's a two-game swing. And we talked about this yesterday a little bit. I think the stopping the bleeding element was a big part of this, just to kind of put a Band-Aid on this thing. The losing streak's over. You're only a game and a half back now. Uh, looks like they're off to a good start tonight now. But uh, psychologically, it's tough, man. When you start losing, uh, it feeds upon itself, and now they got it going the other way. Despite the fact they had 17 hits, five of them doubles, still no home runs. I think the stat that was thrown out there in the month of July, uh, Rob, uh, Soriano just went from the Cubs to the uh, to the Yankees, had more home runs in July than St. Louis did. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that's, you know, I think that's...